giving the kid a toy gun, start telling the kid, don't point it at people, you know. I mean, you, you start teaching kids gun safety with their with their Nerf guns. You don't... They can say what they want. We all know that the real theory behind the toy gun buyback is to indoctrinate these kids at an early age just to get used to the government taking your stuff away. They're not hiding that. Like, that's the guy, the guy that put it together. His basis is to teach kids that guns aren't toys and you shouldn't have guns and play with guns. Like, that's his whole deal. He's he's shout, He's clouding it with the false sense that people kill kids with guns all the time. Not good. Hey, uh, guys, I just want to let you know I went ahead and went live just for the heck of it. So I just wanted to give the viewers out there a little taste of the excitement of the pre-show before we get into these podcasts, because that's actually where a lot of the great discussion actually happens. So, David, I, I do apologize real quick for just not giving you a prompt on that one, but we are we are currently live, everybody. We are live. We are over on gunchannels.com. We are on YouTube right now, Caliber Corner episode number 74. This is the last episode of 2018. Not the last episode, I hope, in general, but the last episode of 2018. So, again, we are going off of... Uh, Viewer requests. We are fueled fueled by viewer requests. And today we're going to share our 2019 firearms resolutions. That's right. We all got to commit to something for 2019. Uh, We're going to have a discussion on some suggestions for iron sights, red dots, holographic sights. We've all got some experience with those. And then we're going to ask the question Do you see an R? Do you have the FFL03 or FFL3 license for Trio and Relic? And I'll discuss that when we get there. So before we do that, we'll go ahead and let the uh, panel introduce themselves, and then we'll do a check-in and a roll call and see who's joining in, because sometimes we have people joining in a couple minutes early. So uh, starting off on my left, AWAG, how's your morning going? What you been up to, brother? It's doing absolutely splendid. I had my cup of coffee, and I'm reviewing footage that I took when I was out in Indiana. So Cool. Yeah, I saw some pictures you had posted on Instagram of the flight and stuff taking off. Is that right? Oh, yeah. How was the weather out there? Was it pretty crazy out there or not? It was actually pretty nice out. I Good. mean, as soon as we went to go take off, like my very last day there, it kind of rained a little bit, made the takeoff a little bit uh, sketchy. But as soon as we were above the clouds, it was just smooth sailing. I noticed that a uh, military arms channel had posted something where they had some trees that got blown over on their target. So they have a severe storm blow through while you were there. It, it must have been right yeah. beforehand, uh, but the damage... See, where I was was about two hours south of where he is. Okay. So, I mean, it's it's quite a distance. So, I don't know what weather they had there, but it's much colder there than it is uh, south of Indianapolis. So, it kind of sounds like Nebraska. You can have exact opposites in the weather in the same state and not even realize it. So, yeah. So, hey, man, what's coming up on the channel? What's new? What do you got going down the pipe here? Um, well, kind of leading into the uh what our new year's resolution thing is is uh, i'm building a romanian psl right now and uh, i'm just waiting on a receiver so hopefully um receivers will be on the market by next year like end of january maybe maybe even beginning of january sounds good sounds good cool man cool all right, well, just keep us updated, keep us informed, and as always, man, I want to thank you for being with us. You've been with us for years now, AWAG, mm-hmm. and uh, it's always nice to have your company, man, so thank you so much. Cool. All right, moving on. David Bowling, what's going on, Mr. Kingpin? How you doing? Uh, doing pretty good, man. Thanks for the invite, as always. Glad right. to be here. So, hey, what's what's coming up on the channel? You've been a busy guy lately. I've been seeing you show up in a lot of podcasts and stuff, and, and what you been up to lately? Uh, you know, just trying to get past this whole December thing. And uh, get back onto a normal schedule. Uh, so, holidays got things messed up a little bit for you, kind of running all over the place and stuff, or what? Yeah, it always works that way from you know from Thanksgiving through New Year's, but yeah, it's almost over. We we'll get back to normal everyday life. What about you guys? You've been catching a lot of snow out there lately. Has your weather been weird, or what do you got going on? You guys been getting buried? No, it's been. We've had one snow, and it was right right near <laughs> Thanksgiving, and. Uh, it wasn't supposed to snow at all. It was supposed to sleet, and we ended up getting like six to eight inches or something like that. And <laughs> I, then since then, it's just been actually decently warm. It rains a whole lot, but that's about it. I always said if I wanted to do anything in life, you know, for a second career, it'd have to be a weatherman because it's the only job where you can be wrong 50% of the time and still keep your job, you know? 
<laughs> oh, sure. He can be wrong more than 50% of the time. <laughs> well, at a minimum, you know, it's like, I wish I could just be wrong half the time and not have to worry about getting fired, you know? But anyway, so now, man, it's good to have you with us. Uh, future of the channel, what you got coming up, man? You got anything lined up for 2019? Can you give us a sneak peek? Yeah, I'm going to continue with my Firearms Inventors playing card deck series. Sweet. And then, uh, you know, just keep everybody posted to the stuff I pick up along the way. Cool. We've got to give a plug for, for G-Webs and like GearWebsites.com if you're looking for any of that swag. You want to get those firearms and vendor decks if they're still available, the Old West trading cards. Uh, a lot of good information for a firearms fan over there, too. So good stuff, man. All right. Well, hey, David, thank you for joining us as usual, man. It's always good to have you here. I know it's early. And uh, thank you for joining us today. So, All right. Uh, Sandhill Shooter, what's going on, man? Broadcasting from the beautiful state of Nebraska. Did you, uh, did you see the cool snowmageddon? There we are. <laughs> That's not this too is, bad, man. No, we only got a couple inches here except for where it drifted up. So there's yeah. about 10 inches right in front of my front door. But aside from that, uh, it's only a couple inches of snow. It's not so bad. Oh, cool. That's but, not so bad. Uh, I don't know. I could yeah, help out here, dude. I had to clear out snow from the driveway a couple times and bust out the snowblower. I had to clear a clear a path for my dog so we could actually go outside. <laughs> Well, oh, that's man. because your your dog can't see over eight inches no. of snow. No, he can barrel through it, but he's got to get into the snow first before he can go through it. That's a hard for Corgis have a tendency to get high centered. They, they're a full size dog with half size legs or quarter size <laughs> legs, so they just have a tendency to kind of wobble through the snow. So it's been an adventure lately. Um, but yeah, we finally got the sidewalks all cleared out. It's looking good. So anyway, what's 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 coming up on your channel? You got some uh, two a Tuesday coming up on the eighth, right? January eighth, next episode. Yep, we will not be doing it again this next week just because that's New Year's uh, Day, so we won't be doing a New Year's Day chat. But uh, um, depending on the travel situation, if, I, uh, if I'm if i traveling alone on Thursday, I may just turn the camera on and do something for anybody that wants to hang out with me on the trip, and I, and I may not. Uh, we'll kind of see. We're not sure if I'm coming alone or not when, when I go up hunting, but that's coming up. Uh, this next weekend, so be looking for some impromptu live stuff on my channel and maybe Travis's too. Let's hope um, so. Let's hope so. I got plenty of data available, so we'll see. <laughs> and I got a hotspot for you, so that's oh, not nice. that's not gonna be a problem. If if you want to sit out uh, in a deer blind and uh, do caliber corner Saturday morning off your laptop, I mean we can do it. So. Oh God, I don't think I have a laptop out there. We'll just use the phone if we do anything. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, um, I will be hunting with uh, with Sandhill Shooter here next week, and Caliber Corner for Saturday is going to be up in the air. I, I would expect it would have to be some sort of a again impromptu live stream. If I do something, I won't have my regular studio going on. The man cave won't be there. I'll be in God's man cave, which is Nebraska back country. Uh, we'll be wearing orange. <laughs> yes, yes, we'll be wearing lots of bright orange. Yes, blaze orange. Uh, so I don't, I don't, guys, don't guarantee on next Saturday. I mean, hopefully we can do something and go live. I don't know if we'll be able to send out links and stuff. It's going to be kind of a learning curve because I don't really do caliber corner for my phone. Uh, so we'll kind of, we'll kind of figure it out. I do have a Chromebook I could bring with me that would probably do the job. Uh, if we had a hotspot, we could run off of. So we'll, we'll see what we can do. It's going to be exciting. I'm, I'm pumped up, man. I'm ready to go. Ah, uh, man, good stuff. All right. So anyway, Sandhills, thanks for joining us. I know you're getting busy heading off for work and stuff. So if you got to drop out, come back in. Uh, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll be watching for you when we can, do. Yep, I'll hang out as long as I can. Thanks for the invite. Cool, Glad to be cool, here. Cool. All right, man. Squib, Squib's with us. Squib, what's new in your world, man? You got that second cup of coffee down yet? You waking up? Yeah, yeah, I'm on cup three. Uh, wow, I better catch up with you. <laughs> yeah, goodness. well, I mean, I drink coffee about as fast as I drink beer. So there you uh, go. There you go. Wait a minute, what? No. <laughs> So, uh, are we 2019? Is this going to be a time of change for Squibs Channel on YouTube and over on GunChannels.com? Are you gonna you gonna have you to mean am I actually gonna finally make a are decent you gonna, video? Are you gonna make a video? Yeah, are you gonna are you gonna <laughs> catch up with the rest of us here? I know you got you're sitting on a pile of content, man. You're like you're like the prince of the uh, YouTube world. You've got thousands of recordings you have yet to release, right? Uh, well, edit and release. Editing's the go. big time consuming go. thing with uh with december being what it is i'm like in the same crunch with everybody else busy and kind of uh video editing and whatnot took a back seat um yeah next month i want to get back in the swing of uh editing and releasing videos um 
there's uh there's some projects I've got in the works. Uh, I want to do some videos on uh, tumbling. Uh, I want cool. to uh, go back and um, revisit the whole the mat thing. Uh, that's a, a project of mine. Uh, try to fix the the problem with my Tokarev clones and um, maybe see if I can make a video out of that. Uh, and then after that, it's, I don't know, more trains, uh, more gardening once the summer hits. Uh, if I get some editing software, maybe uh, the quality will go up a little bit. But for right now, I'm just, you know, doing what I do. And I've got a lot of folders that I've got to pick through and decide, do I want to even try to edit this and publish it? Do I want to add some more footage, shoot some more footage and try to splice something together? Or do I just want to scrap it all together? So yeah. I'll figure that all out after, after new year's. Uh, yeah. But for right now, I've got some, I've got some material. It's just a matter of, of doing something with it. Okay. Well, you know, like I said, I don't want to make a tech chat, but do check out video pad pro. That's what I use on my computer. And it's 50 bucks for the software for a lifetime membership of it or whatever downloads and updates. And it runs really well on just about anything. So that's what I use for all my videos. You want to get some content out there, man. That's what you got to do, brother. Well, oh, uh, right. you just gave out your big secret to everybody. <laughs> no, it's okay. I tell everybody about it. It's a great program. I used Cyberlink video editor for years and then started having some audio problems. So I did shit and went with something. Went with the first thing that popped up on a Google search and uh, Google One. So, yeah. If, I, uh, if I'm muted and I don't. I don't unmute. That means I'm just uh, getting my stuff together and getting it in the truck and getting on the road because I'll be uh, going deer hunting this afternoon and then tomorrow. Yeah. So uh, I'll, I'll be I'll be there on the screen, but I might not might not be able to answer. Cool, cool, cool. And joining us here, Tony, you're usually not fashionably late. Where were you, man? What's going on? Um, I was looking for Internet. Ah, looking and you found it, I can see. <laughs> oh, yes, man. What? Yeah. After some tense and tense language. I gotcha. I gotcha. I'm glad you kept that off air that we kept it muted for the for the young ears out there listening in the audience. So um so Tony, tell me, man, what's what's new for the twenty nineteen? What you got going on this year? This year coming up. You got anything cool lined up in the pipe for YouTube wise or gun channel wise or just personal? What you got going on, man? Nothing. I got nothing planned. Okay. All right. No problem, man. No problem. Well, hey, let's go ahead and take a quick little roll call. We're going to go ahead and take attendance to see who's with us today. So over on the uh, gun channel side, we've got Paper Plane Crash joining in over there. we got David Bowling over there. And here we've got Patrick over there, too. It's good. Good morning, guys. Good to see you over there on gun channels. And then on the YouTube side, things are pretty lively. we got uh, Midnight Range, TM joining in with us, Patriot in the Darks with us, Edwin Griffin, Sean Pondry, Black Cat Outdoors, Slim Cowboy, uh, Hootie Who, Drusifer, Mubut's out there. Uh, let's see, Scott P79. I think uh, Stan's out there. SS Pond is out there. Uh, did I miss anybody? Hopefully, didn't miss anybody. Cadillac Jacks with us. Blue Steel 44 joining in. Britt Thomas. Uh, again, I apologize if I miss anybody. Ozzy Orsborn. And David was the first person to say hello. Yeah, don't forget about gunchannels.com. Real quick, guys, I want to make a plug for uh, the Outlaw Hatfields channel over on YouTube. He is doing a 500 VR giveaway. So you head on over there and he's got the the kind of the, the requirements for entering the drawing. It's really easy to do. He does a lot of really cool interviews with content creators, you know, primarily firearms content creators. And the interviews are a lot of fun to listen to. So make sure you check out uh, Outlaw Hatfield's channel over there on YouTube. You just search for Outlaw Hatfield, like Hatfields and McCoys, and it will pop up and you can find his channel over there. We'll try to get a link out there to you, too. So um, do make sure you get in that. Um, otherwise, am I missing anything? What's going on? I think we're I think we're ready to, to get this sucker fired up. A lot of topics for today. Uh, again, this is the end of 2018. I'll be putting out a video on my top five guns purchased in 2018, which is funny because I only purchased five guns in 2018. I'm sorry to admit that. Um, that as we go into 2018, what's that? That should be easy then. Yeah, no doubt. It was. The, I know I bought 12 the year before and this year because, you know, we're kind of going pre-election. I bought a bunch of stuff into 16, 17, then 17, 18. Not quite so much. I'm kind of changing my focus a little bit. And I'll bring that up, which, which takes us into the first topic. Uh, I don't really want to make this something where we have to run it through the whole panel, but what are some of the things that you guys want to do as firearms owners or enthusiasts? What sort of gun New Year's resolutions have you made or are you going to make? Is there anything that you want to kind of dedicate yourself to? Or is there something you want to put more time and effort into as, as gun owners? This is kind of just, just throwing it out there. What's something you guys want to want to do for yourselves personally? 
something you learn how to do. shoot better. Learn how I to want to do some actual gun content, really. Tony, it's it, and then you know the nice thing, Tony, about that is you can you know you can do all that on the phone and you can just upload it. You don't necessarily have to have stable internet to do a live podcast on something. You know, I'd like to you know maybe see some of your collection, Tony, or, or talk about some of your favorite firearms and why and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so just just kind of get it out there. Foose is joining in. Foose, what's going on, man? How you doing? Not much. How are you guys going? How's it going? You, you waking up? Are you awake, Foose? You there? I, I yeah. Can you hear me? Oh yeah, we can hear you good, man. No okay, problem. Yeah. Clear. So so yeah. Foose, we're gonna put you on point now. You have started an ammunition manufacturing mm -hmm. business. We can mention this now because it is official. It is public. You are taking orders. Tell us about it real yeah. quick because you're gonna be my go-to. Uh, I know I'm going to be a paying customer of yours, okay. right? Yep. What, what's yep. going on, man? Let us know about this real quick. So sports shooters ammunition. I do not have a website. I am extremely small. Um, I nine millimeter, 125 grain, uh, round nose. If you uh, want to get a hold of me, uh, I do have a Facebook sports shooters ammunition, um, or sport shooters ammunition, all spelled out shooters with an S. Uh, at gmail.com. Uh, you can get a hold of me there. Um, yeah, just uh, it's nine bucks a box of or a box of 50, and you'll pay actual shipping. So, what I'm think, still thinking about doing is charging $30 for shipping. And if it costs me $20 to ship, you will have a $10 bill in your order whenever you get it. So, that's cool, man. That's cool. Um, PayPal, Square, stuff like that. I'll put the links out there on the the feed over here for you guys on the gun channel side and also on the uh, yeah thank you side over here. Now, are you going to get a, a website up and going? Or are you just going to get like a basic Google site up and running so you just have a have a presence so people want to want to go to to get just to contact you better? They will. Is that is there going to be a plan for that? Um, yeah, I, I I already do have a have a URL saved. Okay. Uh, or you know yeah, but I I don't do not have a website. Because I am, you know, I mean, it, it is just me. I, you know, I do have a life outside of the, no, know, the business. No, so and all the podcasts that you do yeah. and all the shooting. How do you have time for a personal I, life, man? That's what I want to know. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, yeah, and I, I don't want to be like huge. I mean, if I do a hundred thousand rounds a year, uh, I, I'll be happy with that. Okay. Um. My break even point is about forty forty five thousand because of insurance costs okay. okay um and per, per year in sales right yes per year in sales, per year in sales. Okay. yeah um and then if you know like like if i find a better discount on let, let's say i go out and i find primers for 20 bucks instead of 30 bucks you know however many primers that is I'll have a sale and it'll be a cent less per round. So it's what if if I get a cheaper product or a you know cheaper you know, find a place for a cheaper component, the savings will get, get passed directly to consumer. I'm not going to be, you know be oh I guess I'm going to make an extra cent on a round. I'm not going to do that. So okay, no, okay. Oh, that's good. I mean that's that's a good thing. And, you know. You're, you're gonna have people who say well i can go buy it at walmart for this price or i can go buy it for that price well to get the 125 grain is that what you said what, well, yeah 125 grain it's round ball yeah. um it's not jacketed it's polymer coated uh, it's the see whenever you look at full metal jackets mm -hmm. it's not a full metal jacket the base is usually exposed yeah these, yeah. these polymers they are 100 percent encapsulated lead okay. so there the lead does not come in contact with the hot powder whatsoever cleaning not an issue at all no no additional issues with like polymer fouling in the lands and grooves or anything like that at all or no uh no? The, only, okay. the, only, the, only, the only this is how i clean my barrel i put another round down it mm. like easy I, enough <laughs> not even like i i don't even put a uh a brass brush down my barrel it's not needed. And somebody who does competitive shooting, you go through a lot of ammunition, so you know what you're talking about. You're not just somebody who says, "Well, I've done the 50 rounds, and this is what it looks like." You're actually talking from experience, yeah. So people can get a good, yeah. So here's your chance, guys, to support the little guy, right? Although Foos is a pretty big dude, support the little <laughs> guy, help him get out there, you know, help him help him get his business up and running, so he can 
buy more Makarovs and steal them out of my hands. And uh, no, I'm just messing with you, Boost. And uh, I will be putting I will be putting an order for ammunition in with Boost here pretty soon too. So I'm excited. I want to show off the ammunition and do some testing with it, just kind of play around with it. It should be a lot of fun. So, all right. So, 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 Foose, your your resolution for 2019 is already happening. It's to make your sports shooters business take off, right? Yes. Um, that and hopefully get a uh, a return on my investment a little bit. Uh, I, right right now, I have about eleven thousand dollars of my own money into the business. So, okay. I haven't been able to do much, you know, as far as buying firearms or anything like that or traveling or anything like that. Oh, yeah. No, this is, I mean, start your own business. It's a huge. Yeah. A lot of people think it's just a matter of just going onto some online forum website and filling out an LLC and that's it. You've got insurance, you've got facilities, you've got manufacturing, mm-hmm. you've got supply, demand, you have boxing, you have shipping. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a huge kind of burden you put on yourself, but it can also be a great thing for what you're doing for the firearms community, mm-hmm. too, which yep. is really cool. Yeah, the the only thing I you know I, I'm as I said you know I, I have my insurance now. Um, the only thing that I have not done is is the shipping yet. Okay. Um, but I'm just going to use uh, you know worldwide carrier like everyone else does. Okay. Um. So yeah. Okay. Cool. 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 Man, and a lot of yeah. Go ahead. So so I I have boxes right now so, you know for five hundred and a thousand. So that will fit, fi- you know, five hundred rounds and a thousand rounds. So that is going to be, you know, probably the best, you know, best way to buy is five thousand or, I mean, starting at five thousand, five hundred or a thousand rounds at a time. Okay. Um, and then like, yeah, I'm planning on going to Watermaker. I mean, yeah, Watermaker Gun Show. Um, if you guys are going there, there's going to be there's a discount for bulk packaging it doesn't come in a box it comes in a really thick uh, plastic bag and uh yeah if, if you drive there and you guys want some it'll be uh it's ten dollars off a thousand five dollars off 500 and the difference is the actual <laughs> box that's how much the box cost me oh wow are so, you gonna have you'll have a table set up then or are you gonna be selling it at the gun channels table or are you gonna be no, at a vendor table or no, what? no 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 it'll be for you guys that that go Oh, to the water okay. maker. Like okay, if okay. you guys let's say, you know, you and Matt or you know, whoever drives there, if you want some, I'll I'll deliver it to you right there. Okay, I gotcha. I gotcha. So cool, man. And like I said, you can save a couple bucks and you know, again, you might say, Well, I can go to Walmart and save no one. You go to Walmart, you're gonna buy other stuff you don't need anyway. Mm-hmm. It's about impossible to go there and not go by the clearance aisle or go by the firearms counter or go by and end up picking up stuff you don't necessarily need. So who's is here to save you money, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and, and have a good, uh, have yeah. a quality ammunition. Uh, as I said, it's 125 grain. Moving it, out of my Shadow Twos, they move about 10,050 uh, uh, feet per second. Um, I've shot them out of um, my Star Mile BM, my uh, M70A1, which is a Tokarev and 9 mil. I've shot it out mm-hmm. of uh, Smith and Wesson Glocks. Uh, Sig P320s, um, of course my CZs, and they all run. I have uh, a PCC shooter that uh, shoots it. I have um, another CZ guy, another Glock guy, another Sig guy that you know. I have basically five or six friends that are shooting my ammunition. Um, no issues at all. Nothing's popped up no. at all. People run into. Okay. No. Okay. There you no. go. Like I, I did with the machine, I did have a teething issue where I was having high primers, um, but that is that's a long time ago. And I I gave ammo to people to say, hey, make sure this stuff runs. Very first, you know, first day, I found it, fixed it. I called that ammo out um, as for for my practice ammo and mm-hmm. I have an ammo box sitting next to me that says shit across the top because oh, okay. it is shit <laughs> stuff. It's not going out. Okay. Um, I, I have a lot of ammo that I have for practice that I have cut my teeth on for it. Um, even using different powder and stuff like that. So it's not yeah. going out. Um, what's going out is the same load that I have used for the past five or six years in USPSA, I've probably loaded on, you know, th- this load, 140, 150,000 rounds easily. So. 
Cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. That's it's quite the machine. That's quite the setup that you got going on in your business and stuff. And it's going to be a good thing. So there you go. And, and I, I am going to create a gun channels page for sports okay. shooters ammunition. So if you are members of gun channel, you get a hold of me there. Um, and I am going. I am working to see exactly where my cost point is, and I am. I'm wanting to get a discount for Gun Channels members. There you go. So, so even more reason to get over GunChannels.com. We've been telling you guys for years to join. No excuse not to. Just get over there, set yourself up with a free account, hang out in the community, get to know people. That's where I met everybody here on the panel right here, more or less. I mean, through Gun Channels and through uh, through YouTube. So, all right. Uh, okay. So, 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 David. Okay, we can just go ahead and run this down the line. Why not? Hey, like, what is your re what are your gun resolutions for 2019? What are you gonna do, man? Um, gun resolution is eventually build the uh, the PSL, which hopefully will be soon. Yeah. Uh, test fire it. Hopefully it will function flawlessly. <laughs> be nice. Um, yeah. uh, learn to shoot better and start saving up more money to uh, <laughs> you know move out. Even though that's not really gun, yeah. but it, it move, move it, out it, is the key does. here. You want to get to a free state, right? You want to yes. get to and get your. Pursue your dream, which is to manufacture firearms. Correct. Exactly. There's nothing wrong with that. A lot of people have done it. I mean, every every business started off as a small shop that grew into something bigger. And, and why not, man? Why not? Yeah. So um, currently, I would like to, short term, I would like to learn how to shoot better. Uh, so I went out and bought a variety of different targets. Um, I got one of those, I don't know if they're Magpul or, or something, but they have these targets that have shapes, letters, numbers colors uh on it and i got a deck of cards that go with it that has all the shapes letters numbers colors and all that stuff on it so when i go to the range uh i can bring a buddy and he'll draw from the deck and he'll oh, yeah. call either like a color or a number or a letter or a shape so <clears throat> and some of the classes i've taken i've done drills like that it is a lot of fun it's exciting it's fun mm -hmm. it really gets you to focus i mean it is it is very cool to do and, and so, sorry, I, I laughed. Nope. It's the, the whole uh, saving you know, money, <laughs> sa saving uh, or I know shooting better and then saving money. And yeah, sorry, but I, I reload so it can cut down on the cost of ammunition, and also I can fine tune a hand load to the firearm so uh, it I can actually be more accurate with said firearm. There you go. Nice, nice, nice. All right, man. Cool. David, what about you? Firearms resolutions for 2019, man. What are you going to do personally or with family and friends? What's what's the plan, man? Oh, well, personally, I'm going to try to learn more about firearms history and learn more about the actual firearms and ammunition itself, which includes, you know, trying to get into reloading this year. Mm -hmm. And then as far as friends and family and everybody else out there, do a little bit more uh, trying to get people out to the range or get you know new people interested in firearms all right man. not really interested in trying to to quell the anti-gunners debate because they're not really interested in hearing what i gotta say anyway yeah. but the people who might be on the fence or just don't carry the way maybe they'll want to go shoot one time yeah sounds like a plan man and, and uh <laughs> i'm gonna be echoing a lot of your sentiments right there man a lot of what you're mentioning are things that i want to do I hear you do. So maybe we can tag team and start getting some reloading stuff going on so we can help each other out a little bit. There's a yeah, lot of knowledge right. in the community too, to help us, but it's, it's, it's a big leap when you get into it. It's steep learning curve initially. And uh, I think something that you'll be, you'll be good at once you get a little bit of practice with it and you do some, do some reading up on it and stuff. So cool. All right. So Foos, we got you covered. You're going to be ruling the world, ru ruling the world with your ammunition empire here pretty soon. <laughs> Yeah, I want to laugh pretty hard at that one. <laughs> yeah, there we go, there we go, yeah, because yeah, it's so inexpensive to get into. So, uh, all right, Sandhills, moving on. If you can join us, buddy, uh, any firearms resolutions for 2019? What is the plan? What are you gonna do? Uh, I've got a couple. One of them's gun yeah. related. One of them's just kind of general. Um, yeah, I want I I want to find a place fairly close by that I can do some shooting and uh, get more lead down range this year, which it won't have to. It won't have to be a whole lot to be more than a typical year for me. So if I can even just get a couple couple extra boxes downrange, it'll be more than I've ever had the opportunity to do before in a whole year. So I know a supplier. 
<laughs> uh, yeah, there you go. I got I got your deal right here. <laughs> I know one too. He's just not off the ground yet. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I, I, actually, I I am taking orders. Okay. So. I, need, I need to support you. Um, and then gun related resolution is actually to uh, uh, I don't know if I'll get it done this year or not, but um, I want to find my wife something with a with a red dot on it. Oh, okay. We were uh, we were hanging out with with her brother over the weekend last weekend, and uh, he's got one of the new Smith and Wesson Victory twenty twos. The it's either the competition or target model. I can't remember which, but it's it comes um, stock with a with a Vortex Viper red dot on it. Oh, okay. And we were just goofing around. We weren't at the ring. We weren't shooting it. Uh, he was just showing it off to me at the house. But uh, I handed it to my wife, and she looked through it, and she said, "This is so much easier than sights. That's what I want." So, I think there that the whole trick is, you know, she she knows that she needs to shoot more and and just get some some practice in. But she's still intimidated. And if I can find anything at all that makes it fun, then. That's what, you know, I'm going to use whatever edge I can to, to make it fun for her just to, to get her to want to go out there and get over that fear. So I think a red dot might help. It's just we have to buy a new gun first and then get get a gun that will take a red dot and then get the red dot, get everything together for her. So, so with, with this red dot, are you wanting a slide-mounted optic or, like, are, are you wanting, like, 22 style or – larger or like what what are you wanting um it's that's a great question um because my ultimate plan to begin with was to get her um get her the gun that she shot very well when we were down in omaha earlier this year which was a 22 uh walther ppq and i thought that would be great because she could learn on the 22 and then use the exact same frame uh mm -hmm. same grip everything same sight picture when she goes to nine millimeter um and the only thing that'll be different is the uh, the recoil impulse will be more. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of the plan. And I know I can get a, a what is it, the Q4 tack of the version of the PPQ that, that's got oh, the plate yeah. for the red dot. But I don't know if the 22 versions come that way. So I don't know what we'll do. We'll figure something out if we have to skip the 22 and just go to go to nine. That's a big right, enough right. gun. Um, it would be a big deal. Well, I mean. I mean, you, with that, you, you could you could always go with like a, a Ruger or something like that, and <laughs> that has the top mount on it. Um, make them I, one of the Mark series. Do they make one with the the RMR plates or whatever? The Ruger Mark. Yeah, I know. Well, Ruger too. Or? I, I, I'm sure. I'm sure they do. Um, and it may not be like an RMR. It may be a different type of red yeah. dot, but just oh, to get her well, shooting cool. and used to the dot i mean that, that's that's the biggest thing because the the dots are offset off the frame okay the so slide real quick if you can do something like yeah. that i'll just get i'll just get another one of of what her brother has i'll get the sw victory mm -hmm. with with the factory red dot you know already mounted on it i mean if, if that yeah. if that's what it comes to otherwise otherwise we'll just find her something that uh um she can use for all around we can she can learn on it and and i think that a full size ppq isn't going to uh isn't going to be you know scary for her um even in nine yeah. that, that's what you need right there buddy mark four tactical you got the picatinny up on top the picatinny in there you threaded for a suppressor <laughs> you could you could easily get yourself a red dot option if you go that route without I, having I a the that gun. I can get the Smith and Wesson that's got the red dot on it. Well, yeah, probably. I don't know. We'll have to see what the okay. I'm sixty nine. It's probably four ninety nine for that. How much does that victory cost anyway? I don't. I don't know for sure what that one costs. It's her brother's is a little bit fancier. It's got a carbon fiber barrel on it. It. I know it comes from the factory with a cool looking. I don't know if it's a compensator, muzzle brake. It's not really a compensator. It just looks cool. Flash hider. I'm not sure so, what all it's supposed to be. All right, a base but, victory MSRP is 409. Can you find the? Uh, yeah, we'll see if we can find that for you real quick. Here. I'm doing a screen share. So, so, so are you looking at the Q5 match? What are you looking for? No, like the Q4 TAC, maybe. Not a match gun. I want something that she can. It, you know, once she gets good with it, she can take the same gun that she's used to and carry it. And I don't think we want a match gun for that. Well, I mean, it's, it's not really not that much different. 
Okay, so yeah, we got the uh, Performance Center SW22 target models. There it is. That's the one. The barrel That's maybe instead of the carbon. Well, if you want to see the carbon fiber, I mean, you're going to pay a pretty penny for that. That's 868. Yeah, that, 868. That's the one that, that thing was that thing was nice. It's got a nice grip. Okay. Well, you know, well, it's a flat trigger and stuff like that. That's competition Here, stuff. There you go. Yeah. yeah, that's true. That's true. When, you know, if that's what you like, hey, yeah, that's what yeah, gets her into, man. Absolutely. Yeah, dude. So, I mean, if it comes to that, I mean, I would do, you know, maybe look into something like that or look into a Ruger. But I, I don't think that that's where we want to go just because – um, I don't want to make things too complicated as far as, well, Let's you know, this gun has this kind of slide, but this gun has a different kind of slide. And, yeah. you know, we're, we're still, we're still doing baby steps. Um, so I think that just, just in general, uh, if I can, before the end of the year, I'd like to find something for her, um, with the red dot on it, that'll make it more fun to, like I said, to want to go and, and just do some planking on the range. And if we start out with a nine, it's not going to be a problem. Because it's not like she can't handle the recoil. She's just intimidated in general. And so yeah. just getting her outside, away, that indoor range was probably the worst thing I could have done. Yeah, the, the noise, the the, the, the concussions the amplified. The air. Yeah. I mean, yeah. The, it, it wasn't the best scenario. I, I know now we won't go back to an in, indoor range, so we'll just go outside someplace. Well, and with Ear Pro and being outside, uh, it's not going to be a big issue as far as the noise goes. So then we just have to learn – um, to, uh, you know, how to aim, um, put some tape over one side of her shooting glasses because she can't only close one eye. So, so you know, work on stuff like that. So, we, we so, one. so try like some blue painter's tape. Cause a lot of people will take, Oh, I'll just do something. Try something to totally knock that out. Blue painter's tape is mm -hmm. what does great. That's where I, that's how I started shooting uh, two eyes open and an indoor range is not bad. If you, only have like one other person shooter in there shooting in there just the problem. but there if there's a lot of people in there it it's extremely loud it's it's not not, not only did we have five of the six bays full but the one directly to our left was firing an ar and then oh, oh man two, two bay, three bays down to the right this guy i'm pretty sure had a 308 it was he was sighting in his deer rifle and i'm pretty sure i was looking at 308 brass land on the floor so we've yeah. got that on an indoor range. It was not, it, it was sucked for me and I'm used to guns going off. Yeah, that, that does suck. So really... AR was, I mean, it was just, if we had to do it over, we wouldn't have gone to the indoor range. She's not turned off to shooting. She's turned off to indoor ranges though. Yeah, outdoors, man. If you got, I know I'm a long ways away, but if you guys can ever can ever get up here and go shooting, the, that it's so it's so much more pleasant outside, especially when you got room, you got space. The noise is is way. I had that same situation when I took my buddy and his wife to the indoor range down in Dallas after they purchased a few guns. Uh, we went, you know, they shot outdoors the first time and then went indoors, and it was she did not, the wife did not like it just because it was so she was so unconditioned to it, you know. And, and with enough practice, you can get to get used to it, but. It's it's just not fun. To, you, you can't even focus yourself when you've got that much noise going off next to you, especially if you got the deer rifle over here. You got the AR right here, and you know, so that, that makes sense. Yeah. Well, and I guess that makes for one more resolution. Then mm -hmm. sometime sometime this year, I, I resolve to go to your house and hang out for a weekend. Hey, come on out, man. We got plenty of room for you. Anytime, dude. We'll go out to the range and have a good time. Shoot some steel and stuff. It's a lot of fun. All right. Hey, we're going to let uh, Outlaw go ahead and introduce himself real quick. Uh, Outlaw, how you doing, man? What's going on, brother? Uh, howdy, folks. I'm doing pretty good, getting ready for work. Um, I got a couple things I'd like to say. Do Love it. the VR. Great job. I, I wasn't Secondly, really awake when I did it. I, I did it at 530 I, this morning, Central I, Time. I, I, got, I, got, I got a VR from the guy who wasn't even subscribed to me at midnight last night. No, I was subscribed to you. YouTube unsub me. I quit getting notifications from you a while ago, and then I'll go back and I'm like, "What is the deal?" No, I've been subscribed to you for a long time, but it just didn't. Uh, I checked that, up again. That's I, happened to me. In October, it's like you just. I looked at my sub subscription list, and you were not on there anymore. I'm like, because eh, I'm just so used to seeing you pop into podcasts and stuff, and yeah. and you know, I'll get suggested videos, and you'll be on there, but. I went back and looked at the list and I was unsubbed, which made no sense to me at all. So well, that's happened to me too. Uh, I've I've been unsub uh, unsubscribed to Matt. 
and I'm always yeah. on his chats. And I'm Unless we're accidentally tapping something when we're working through YouTube on our phones. But yeah, guys, make sure you check your subscription list because you might be surp subs uh, sub surprised, blah, 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 about what <laughs> can happen to your subscription list. It's like you can be unsub for whatever reason. And I mean, I know that YouTube is very, it can, it can, the algorithm can run in a way where you might not be notified about somebody going live, especially if you don't have the bell mashed on your subscription list. Uh, but yeah. Alwa, why don't you tell us about this giveaway you got going on? Let's let you introduce yourself and take the floor for a couple minutes here, man. Well, I am the Outlaw Hatfield, as most of you already know. I am doing a 500 sub giveaway. To be a part of that giveaway, what you need to do is watch some of my interviews. Pick out the one that is your favorite. It cannot be one that you were interviewed in. That's cheating. We're not it was hard for me to not want to choose my own interview. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Um like share subscribe standard you know stuff and um then we're going to have a panel of different youtube personalities decide which one of those that they like the best which one that uh come up with the best way to tell us which video they like the best and then we're going to pick three winners first this second, be tough though, because what if what if everybody in the community does a does a vr then you're going to be just sitting by yourself like what are you going to do you know well, I've already, Ghost has already said he oh, wants okay. to be on the panel. Okay, uh, okay. Sarge has already agreed to be on the panel. So there's right, a couple right. of them that's already. Taking one for the team, that. man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. And I've, I've already got some cool stuff I'm giving away. I'm giving away um, a Palmetto Range bag with seven P mags in it. Uh, it's got a folded up American flag. It's got an AR barrel. If anybody wants to start building ARs, some patches, a hat. So nice, 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 nice. Yeah, so definitely I'll get on over there, there, man. Check it out. I'll be on your panel, half field, because I ain't gonna do no damn video responses. <laughs> well, I didn't figure you would, Tony. You're you're just <laughs> old and grumpy. Tony is the original wait, outlaw. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> outlaw does videos. I must not be subscribed to him. Oh, ouch, yeah, ouch, ouch, ouch. <laughs> yeah, man, he, does, he does some podcasts and stuff. Well, like, I've seen him shoot once or twice on camera. He's okay, you know. Well, it could, be, it could be like your second, your secondary channel. Uh, I went out there. I'm like, I'm subscribed to him. I just didn't have the bell notification, so oh. I didn't have. I never, never got notifications that, that or your videos never popped up. Yeah, I have a second channel. If you guys don't know that, it's it's I just keep it around. It's my original channel before I was doing gun videos, and then I created the the Travis P11 channel. And that second channel, I got a bunch of subs over the weekend. I post a video on an air fryer, and my subscription base like doubles in the weekend. So, <laughs> you know, Foose, I called you a brother yesterday. I sent you a little gift, mm -hmm. and now you're talking bad about me. Hey. Well, that's what that's what families do is they feud. So, so, what, so, they, so they what, what is right. your YouTube channel's name? I'm going out there right now. The Outlaw Hatfield. It's really simple. What you see right there on that little icon on the screen is where you want to go. Hey, <laughs> Boost, buddy, you a bit of McCoy, are you? No. But I did just subscribe to the uh, the Outlaw. Well, thank there, you. There, there are McCoys. There are McCoys out there, too. We have to watch out. Isn't, isn't Night Strike a distant cousin of yours? Isn't that what the deal is? Yes. Or yes. Is he, is he a McCoy. Yeah. Straight up. Yep. Yep. Well, yeah, he's... We're, me and Pollery is probably related somewhere along the line. I just got to yep. figure out where. No, your relatives probably took shots at each other one point or another, right? Yeah, yeah probably. <laughs> well, you should have been fire out west, you know? Yeah. Aren't <laughs> the Hatfield and McCoys like. Is the feud over yeah. or not? Yeah, fuck. Oh, it ain't over. Excuse my French. No, it ain't they over. Started, they signed an official truth, truce a few years ago. Yep. If, uh, uh, if no, a piece of paper doesn't mean shit. It's, it's, an official, mistaken, it's an Alice, official, unofficial truce is what it is. Alice, if I'm not mistaken, you're related on both sides, though, aren't you? Yes, my mother was a McCoy. Oh, my God. Wow. That's got to make for an interesting uh, family reunion, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. Me and, me and uh, Gizzard Gary actually sat one night and went through my geology because that's what he does. And my parents... My lineage, I should say, on both sides leads right back to the feud. Oh, man. That's intense. Devil Lance Hatfield was my great, 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 great uncle, and so was Randall McCoy on my mother's side. Oh, man. So, yeah. So, so basically, 
what you're saying is the feud could start up again because with you if you get mad at yourself looking in a mirror. Yeah, pretty no, much. With red flag laws, let's not go there. With red flag I'm, I'm laws always, popping up left and right. We I'm don't always want, fighting with myself. So. We don't want any more gun confiscation, okay? No, there will be no kidding. fighting in the streets. All right. I, 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 what it is. Have you seen Hatfield? Yeah. He looks a lot like me, just taller and balder. He does look like he's containing an inner feud. Yeah. <laughs> Got, no, that's just his. That's just his, his outward gruff, grumpy appearance. But but yeah, deep down inside, he's actually a really warm, kind, gentle-hearted person. So there the you thing go. is, Ellis Ellis was born to end the feud because mm -hmm. you are what ties the two sides together. Yes. Now now it's one family through you, Ellis. So you're the yeah, chosen right. You obviously you are the chosen one. One else. side don't want me, and the other side don't like me. So no. hey, look, just be <laughs> thankful your family tree has branches. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I'm, love love both branches. <laughs> love both I, I, I mean, I mean that, that that Thanksgiving that Thanksgiving dinner by yourself must be amazing. It really oh, is. Jeez, I get all the ham to myself. <laughs> you get that. You get that. You get that hungry man out of the microwave. <laughs> ah. <laughs> hey, but it's all to himself. That's right. That's hey. I've had many a Thanksgiving with that when I was that route and working in college and, and through through my doll years and stuff. So. Oh man! All right, so we got to we got to take it back now. Squib, your New Year's firearms resolution, twenty nineteen. Squib, what are you gonna do this year, man? What's the plan? Uh yeah. Uh, I'm gonna probably invest more into reloading, and uh, I'm gonna be buying some AR parts for some uh, some assemblies that I haven't completed. I I need to get taken care of. Cool. Cut and dry, man. No problems there. Tony, what about you? What were we going to do? What's your little gun resolution for 2019? Uh, Anything I, you're trying to do new this year? Anything you're going to get into? or? I don't think so. I'm okay. going to try to get out the range and shoot more. Get yeah. the kids out there more. Heck yeah, man. Sounds good. How far do you have to go to get to your range? Is it a long journey for you? 45 or? miles. Ooh. Okay, a little bit of a journey. How much? 45. 25. Ooh. Oh, 25, 25 miles. 25 miles. Okay, okay. Good deal, man. Yeah, get the get the grandkids out there, do some shooting, have some fun. Yeah, I got. Yeah, try to uh, do a bit more. Yeah, Alwa, did I miss you on this one? What are your what, what's your firearms resolution for 2019? twenty nineteen? What are you going to focus on this year? What are you going to do? Chris Victor. Mm. So is it going to happen or what? Oh, it's definitely happening this year. <laughs> this year, so, I will own that gun. So All are right? you going to buy it? See it? See that it's only useful for full auto and sell it all within a year. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to decide which caliber to go with because I found a great deal for the nine millimeter, and you know, I'm like, ah, it's a nine, but it's a Chris Vector. Boost, be nice to those potential customers. You want the nine millimeter outlaw? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, there you go. Well, there so, is, so, yeah. With, with, with the police making ammo now, I'm hoping I, you know, I get a sponsor on my channel. <laughs> there you go. I'll be all right, man. Yeah, so get I, that, get that Chris Vector going. I, I, I'll do free sponsorships all damn day <laughs> from paying customers. Oh man! <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, this ammo's been sent by right Sports Shooters Inc. You know. <laughs> Oh, Can you out free shipping for people that uh, shoot your ammo on their channel and mention you? Maybe reduced because it's looking at like you know twenty dollars for five hundred, thirty dollars for a thousand, and if you start doing that, it's it that basically my profit for a thousand. If not, that that may be more than my profit for a thousand. Uh, okay, yeah. but what about for people who send you? Um... Interesting photos. <laughs> <laughs> you, you want me to send you some photos back? No, he wants oh my God. Ben Franklin. God, no. He let's not let's not venture into the dark webs on this channel. Okay, let's. He wants pictures of Ben Franklin. Oh, there you go. There you I, go. I, I can send him pictures all damn day, not of myself. <laughs> no, no, please don't, because I've seen some of the pictures you've sent before. <laughs> oh um, man. So. Yeah, I mean, and again, like, 
might be able to do something. I, I don't know. I like I, I am looking into a little bit of discount, possibly a shipping discount for uh, uh, Gun Channels members. So, yeah. Are you thinking about going to other calibers? Eventually, I do. I I plan on going to other calibers. My next one is going to be forty. Um, just because that is what because I, I I'm loading for sport shooting. So it's nine and forty is what they is what most people shoot in USPSA. So I'll do that second, and then my third will will be most likely be two two three. But that's down the road quite a bit, and because that going to two two three is um, going to be a pain on the you know with the machine. Like I'm have yeah. to get another machine set up for. Right. Oh, God. Well, let's get those first 50,000 rounds sold and break even on the insurance. And then after that, expand yeah. Out, right? yeah. So, yeah. so, yeah. so insurance is 1400 a year, which doesn't sound that, that much, but whenever you're making, whenever your profit is five cents around, it's a lot. Yeah. That so. thing had provisions for load or lube in the cases. I, I do lube. I uh, I use a spray lube on the cases. Okay, I'm just curious because that would become a requirement for rifle. Well, no, no, you 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 lube before and then run it through, and that's whenever I'll size, tram, all that stuff, and then run it through. Actually, I'd probably do it all on one uh, one pass. Yeah. Gotcha. So. Cool, cool. Okay, um, guys, I'm out of here. I got to head to right. work. Thanks for having me, man. Right. See you. Hey, take care, man. Have a, good morning. Have a good one. Yep, y'all take care. And uh, what I'm going to say today. Oh, go ahead. Oh, you're saying goodbye. All right. Uh, my resolutions for 2019. Again, I want to get a better camera for out at the range, something with an external mic so I can buffer out some of that wind noise because that's always a constant battle for me. Uh, pick up some decent glass, nice optic for, uh, for the rifle. It's kind of a testing optic for channel and i've got some friends that have been asking me about going out to the range they want to become more familiar with firearms they want to do some shooting so i'm hoping i can take them out this spring once it starts to thaw out a little bit and warms up a little bit so that's pretty much what my plans are oh and definitely going to get into reloading this uh this spring hopefully be picking up a press and getting into it so so squibbing you guys i'll be bugging you quite a bit for some advice and information on it uh so what, yeah. what what calibers are you wanting to start uh nine millimeter initially and six five creed more Okay, how Easy much? What volume? The nine millimeter. I've got I've got buckets of brass now, thanks to Squib. I'm not turning into kind of a, a brass. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I gather I gather up all the brass I can get at the range when it's just laying on the ground. I just pick it up and throw it in buckets. Yeah. So I mean, I I just want to get into it initially. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna make any money. I'm not gonna break even off the nine. I mainly want to do it for six five Creed more because once I'm set up for it. I can reload at about a third of the cost of a box of, of ammo. So, um, I'm not look, even I'm not even looking at the investment in the cost of the press or the powder or the dyes. I'm looking at what what am I going to save right out of the box? What am I right. going to save per round versus buying at the store? Yeah, um, go single stage because mm -hmm. that will be your most accurate with yeah. your uh, six five Thank creed more. If that is what you are, that's and, what I'm planning on doing. Yeah, yeah that's my plan right now. Yeah. So, so. Most single stages, you have to screw the die body in each time. So that means each each time you load, your rounds will be a slightly different. Mm -hmm. Get one with a collet system. I know Lee has one. Hornady has one. You can get a, coll a Hornady collet system for the RCBS Rock Chucker. That's what I'm um, going with, yeah. Yeah, and then get the Hornady call it system with it um okay. you have to remove one piece from the rock chucker and stick this on there and then mm -hmm. you set your dies once and you pull the entire die body and call it out so that call it is repeatable okay in there my, my challenger has that yeah david question for you have you been looking into the brands have you been kind of doing some research on the different presses that are out there Yeah, I uh, I don't really. I've been trying to, but the problem that I find is I overload myself with information too much, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, I watch like Chico Wise and you know, uh, 
the crazy Scotsman, their videos, the, and then there's the reloading network. Yes. And, uh, you, know, you-, talk, you know, I talk to Foos about stuff like that all the time or Dead Horse. And so yeah. far, what I've realized is I've got to take a step back and find one specific item, which would probably be the press, mm-hmm. and study out just the press. Yes. Let, let, let me give you a, a solid piece of advice on the press, and that is go buy freaking Lee Challenger press kit, the anniversary kit, or the, God, I can't think of the other one. It comes with the powder measure and all that crap with it for like 130 bucks. Yep. I got a 30-year-old Lee Challenger press here that's still fine. I can't tell you how much ammo it's loaded. So people who uh, talk down on Lee Stepper, uh, off base. Um, their single stages, their turrets are good. Once you get into the presses, they, they just wear out. Um, but I am looking at this Lee. That, that's perfectly fine um, because you do want an O style single stage press. If you gonna go single stage press, there's a C style and an O style. The difference is the press looks like an O versus a C, literally. So, yeah, the Challenger's O. I also have Lee C press here too, but I don't use it for anything but crimping and uh, yeah. So flaring. Th- this is an O style, as you see. Because it's an O. The Lee, the C style only has one vertical side. So if you start putting a lot of pressure, it, it will open up. It's not mm-hmm. as sturdy as the O. And you get that with the 50th anniversary kit. Yes, right? this so, is the okay. 50th. Yeah. Yeah, see, David, you get a lot of what you need to get started. There's going to be some other stuff you're going to have to buy. I don't know if that comes with a caliper. You might want to get yourself a digital scale. Um, yeah. You know, there's, toss there's, there's toss the scale. Digital scale. Yeah, toss yeah. the scale. The scale um, they got's accurate, but it's too easy to screw up. Mm-hmm. And then the 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 drum is good because that is the already the um the drum one, the powder measure. So that's that's good. So yeah, yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. everything is here that you need to load. Um, and Travis, you know, you're going to be doing low quantities. Yeah, hand priming is fine. I hand primed for probably ten thousand rounds. It hurts, okay. but yeah, but yeah, you <laughs> do that to start off. Start off with. Okay. Okay. Um, Which cool. kit is that? This is the Lee Challenger, Challenger single stage fiftieth uh, no, anniversary kit. Fiftieth anniversary. Okay, so there's another one out there, and I don't know what it is, but it comes with the stuff to prime with the press. Okay, yeah, here it is. It's the it's a rifle pistol one. Yeah. Yeah, if you look on Amazon, they've got the kits listed on there. If you go to like Brownells and stuff, you can you can yeah. find them pretty easily. They're, they're pretty near six one half dozen the other, and they're the same yeah. money too. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, so if you want something easy to get into for just a starter for a beginner, that's definitely the way to look. Oh, absolutely. Um yeah. If you think you're going to do like whenever I first started, I, I wasn't going for supreme accuracy, so a little bit of slop in the um, press was okay. I wanted more bulk. I skipped a single stage and I went straight to a turret. And the reason I did that is you can run a turret like a single stage. You just take the auto indexing out and learn that way. Mm-hmm. And then you put the auto indexing in, and you know I was doing 200 rounds an hour within the first you know, month. Yeah. So. Yeah. So David, we did, uh, if you go over to, well, it's not up right now, but it should be over on gun streamer and YouTube and also on, on guntube.org. Uh, we did three reloading chats you know, about a year or two ago. We covered everything from the basics up to the more complex, you know, talk about the different tools, the different items you need to do it, tumbling, cleaning brass, tumbling media, all that stuff. So if you watch those three podcasts, you'll probably get, some pretty good information now because Foose was in on that one, Squib was in on that one, Tony was in on it. Um, probably ought to do that like once a year. Yeah, well, when I get my equipment, we'll start talking, reloading. We can show off the various items that came with it, and we can maybe talk about them and critique them a little bit and give me some suggestions for improvements and stuff like that too. So it's it's yeah, it'll definitely become an item of discussion this spring. 
I'll be looking over. I'll probably order the press here in about a month or so because I'm ready to, to get into reloading. I've got the brass. And thanks to Squib, I've got basically just about everything I need to get started with um, reloading 9 millimeter. I just need to pick up the press itself, obviously, and then I need to get a digital scale, and then I'm good to go. Squibby sent me some 30 out 6 brass. I'm waiting for it to get here. Then I'll clear off my bench and start loading again. Yeah. And thank you for that, Squib. I really appreciate it. Hey, I'm only three weeks late, so. <laughs> hey, man, better uh, late than ever. Right? I don't need it before it gets warm outside, so, <laughs> so it's a, so, fine. So anyone who shoots outside or even inside, pick up your brass. Put, I mean, if anything, oh, yeah. put if them they, in an old coffee jug. You. If they yeah. allow you to, some ranges won't let you, but yeah. yeah. Because it, 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 it's worth money. Um, you know, it, it's not worth a lot of money, but... It is worth money. You could, you know, trade in. Uh, I do like for me. If you send me brass, you will get a discount on your order because that's the one you, thing I don't have to buy. Just as a rule of thumb, the cheapest brass I've found around here for once fired is uh, thirty bucks a thousand mm -hmm. for nine that's, millimeter. That's usually shipped dirty, um, clean, right, yeah. cl clean, processed, ready to prime. So that takes away your cleaning and your deep priming and stuff like that. So it, it does help you. That's usually about fifty to sixty dollars. Um, just thousand. I was just kind of pointing out that there is some money value there. <laughs> One thing I want to say to David though, and Travis, if you haven't bought dies yet, yeah, uh, buy the carbide dies for handgun. Yeah. Yes, because you don't have to lube those. D don't have to, but it works a lot better if you do okay but cool. si single stage chef i wouldn't worry about it um but yeah like like you know as squib said you know uh th or, sorry tony uh, as he said that um you know 30 bucks a thousand dirty whenever i bought bulk a uh, 55 gallon drum i got down to two cents i mean it's and wow. it was worth that for me because of the amount I bought, well, that one extra cent is was, yeah, was worth it. Yeah. But then I have, you know, I have a cement mixer to clean it and dry it and yada yada yada. So there, there's a lot of processing in there as well. Well, you know, I bought several thousand empties, thinking my old lady was going to jump in the nine millimeter too, and she didn't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she she said that amount of brass is what you're telling us that uh she, she went to 38 special. So I had to buy know. thousands of those. <laughs> <laughs> but 38 special, you probably don't need to buy thousands because out of out of a revolver, you your bra you keep your brass a lot longer. Yeah, it uh I bought a thousand and I think it was like uh it wasn't much more than the 30 bucks, but there was shipping involved. Yeah. Uh, oh, it, it, yours was 30 bucks without shipping? Okay. Yeah. I, I bought it from Midway. Oh, and I oh bought okay. It with yeah, a bunch okay. Of others. I bought it and the dies for 38 and probably bullets too. Okay. Like, if you are looking into reloading and wanting brass, there are Facebook forums go out there you will find people that sell brass oh so, yeah yeah uh, that, that's it, where i found my suppliers there are several groups i belong to over on MeWe, which is another social media app you can get onto which does not discourage gun owners and there's a ton of people that sell brass on MeWe also and uh i've been on MeWe for a couple of years now it's just mewe.com i believe it's just mewe.com I think I'm pretty set on brass once I get uh, this squib sent because I'm really not going to use rifle brass that much. I got, I think, a thousand forty-five seventy cases. That'll probably last me forever. Yeah. Uh, Handgun brass, I got a crap load of that. Uh, I know I bought three or four thousand new forty-four Magnum and forty-four special cases. I couldn't find that anywhere used. And God, I got so much nine millimeter that I should be giving it to somebody, I suppose. Hey, man, I might be contacting you. 
you never know. I mean, I've got a lot of nine millimeter. I got a ton. I got a sword anyway. That's going to be part of the fun. I'm initially going to get into and do the the six five Creedmoor right away because I got a hundred rounds of brass just sitting around for that that needs to be reloaded. And uh, that's what I'm shooting the most right now. But yeah. All right. So hey, so, kind of venture down the reloading rabbit hole. Yeah. So, so, so something um, with reloading um, or separating your brass. Mm -hmm. What I do. It's like for my 40, 45, you know, stuff like that. I just put them up on a flat surface and you can tell by heights a lot easier than mm. grabbing it and turning it over and looking at their base. Because, okay. you know, you look at, if you just turn it over and look at their base, what if someone made a 308 out of a 30 odd six? You know, especially when we're going to get up, get up there. Or uh, someone shortened a nine millimeter and made it into a nine Makarov. I've seen that. Uh I'll tell you the the hardest ones I've found to separate are 380 from nine. So if you put them on their base, you will see a distinct difference because right, if you that's take how I put, do it. put them on their base, clump them all up, your nines will be taller, and then you'll you'll look you'll look basically it'll be you know you know how you sometimes like look down uh, I don't know a row or something to see if something's higher you know it's the same thing. Go and then all of a sudden you'll see kind of a hole and you're like, there's a piece of brass. Yep, that's a 380. Yank it out. Oh yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. cool. I say that, but I also have 44 Magnum and 44 Special, but I have not shot both of them at time same time mm -hmm. to have to separate them. Mm -hmm. and same with 38 and 357. All right. Sorry. Okay, guys. So no, it's all good. We went through the resolutions. We talked about reloading. We're gonna. Hey, it's it's it is. You know, once you dive into it, it is. You, you need to do it the right way. You need to educate yourself on it. You need to be careful when you're doing it. Uh, you know, I definitely want. You know, we want everybody to be safe if they're going to be doing it. We want to emphasize that part of it. So don't rush it when you get into it. It's not something that you're going to get into so you can just mass produce ammo overnight. I mean, there's going to be a learning curve to it that you need to learn how to properly do before you get into it. So we always encourage that on these podcasts. We want to be very careful. Uh, when it comes to reloading so all right uh the next uh, viewer request that we had was some solid advice on iron sights and red dot sights we're going to kind of kill two birds with one stone we haven't really discussed about what kind of options are out there for somebody that wants to buy iron sights say for an ar-15 um or any firearm that that allows you the option of putting flip up sights on it backup iron sights uh you know you got a lot of options you know on your on your your ar-15s if you've got a flat top up or you can put your carry handle on there that has a rear side in it if you want to. Um, and I did share a link with with everybody in the in the internal chat. And I'll just go ahead and share this with you guys over on the YouTube side. When it comes time to to buy iron sights, you know, you want to do a little bit of research. I've tried the little $20 cheap uh, UTG and NC Star flip up sights. And they're fine. They tend to be a bit robust and bulky and just kind of heavy in general. Um, I'm just going to say right now, when it comes to iron sights, which we'll start off with, let me just do a little screen share for you guys here real quick. Hopefully not stop the podcast early. Um, when it comes to iron sights, you can spend a lot of money on them. But I would just say from the get go, if you're sitting on an AR, first of all, if you want to be you know budget minded, if you don't have a lot of extra cash to spend, um, check out the Magpul MBUS flip up sights. You know, they're just kind of the standard. There's generic versions you can buy, like on places such as Wish.com for five bucks or ten bucks. I know that PSA has been selling these for forty nine dollars, if I'm not mistaken, for the set with the discount code, which is a really good deal. That's about half price. Uh, the next step up is going to be the AR15 MBUS Pro backup side set. Those are basically the the metal next gen flip up sights that Magpul makes. I've always liked their stuff. I mean, these aren't going to be your necessarily your your go to close combat battle sites that you can rely on on a daily basis. I mean, that you can use these. They're called backup sites for a reason. You could use them primarily if you want to. Um, but the Magpul products, I've always had really good luck with them. And then, you know, anything you see on this page is going to be good for you, whether you want to go through Troy Industries for a set. And, yes, you can spend a lot of money on these sites. Um, I know I bought a DPMS Oracle, and it has that low-profile front gas block. I had to buy a special Midwest Industries extended flip-up front site for it. So, that $350 AR turned into a $420 AR really quick when I had to buy an $80 flip up front side or $90 yeah. flip up front side that's extended. Um, and you couldn't just, and that was the only section you had of rail on the front there. Uh, 
you've got other Daniel Defense. You know, obviously Midwest Industries is awesome. Uh, you've got what is it, Diamond Head or Diamondback? I can't remember the name. Lewis Machine and Tool. So you guys share what experiences do you have with the, uh, the iron sites and the flip up sites? Uh, so, what, what kind of what can you guys share with us? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, please. I, 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 on a a backup rifle that is irons only. Yeah, I have the plastic embus sights okay. because it is backup. It is not a go to. My go to has an aim point on it, and then the Magpul backup sights, the metal ones. Um, on your quote unquote go to rifle, like if someone's coming in your house, you want something metal. Um, you don't want the plastic, but if it's just a range toy or you yeah. know something, you just give to someone. Plastic's fine. Yeah. Uh, one thing you got to take into consideration is you know make sure you've got enough room on the rail. I'm just mm -hmm. saying goodbye to Britt Thomas who's been with us this morning. Uh, make sure that you can fit it on there because I've had you know if you use a riser, some sort of a Picatinny riser plate on the top of your AR because you want to clear that front A2 sight, you might not have space on the back for the flip up sight. So you want to be careful. Like I've got a strike fire too which has just enough room for uh, an M-Bus flip-up side on the back. And that does clear the, the A2 side right there. Right. So I'm okay there, but I mean, if you just happen to run just a big, you know, generic riser and you want to put a scope on it, you might not have a place. You right. might not be able to co-witness either. Co-witnessing is where you're able to use your, your sights with your dot at the mm -hmm. same time. Uh, you know, when you flip up your side, it's in alignment. Many times there's a lower one-third co-witness or an upper two-thirds co-witness and so on. So another thing to consider is, you know, is there enough clearance space? I can flip this up and it's going to be okay. That's not going to hit the back of my optic, but you may have a situation where you have to remove the optic to use your backup sights, which in a combat situation or a gunfight might not be the most convenient thing to try to find a wrench to take that nut off to remove the optic. That's why there's quick remove. Yeah. Yeah. Quick the little, um, yeah, the lever and stuff. Yeah. So my, my, my nephew, I bought him an AR for his first gun and, uh, they have like a three by nine sitting on it for deer hunting and stuff like that. Okay. And you know, there's no backups. Um, if you do run backups and you do have that front gas block, you're not going to be able to, to run plastic on that gas block. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's another thing too. It's I've seen companies sell that low profile front gas block with an embo site on the front. First of all, it's not even going to be in alignment because the low profile site, or any any gas block that's that's got a Picatinny section on it, you're going to melt that front side if you do repeated firing. All that heat's going right through that rail. It's going to warp. It's going to lose at zero. Oh, I, you know, you, you'll just melt the crap out of it. Yeah. So you do need to make sure that you go with a nice iron flip up front side or some sort of an alloy or metal front side. Yeah. So so yeah, I mean usually. So a front side either use an A two, in my opinion. A2 or get a free float rail. Don't these low profile front gas sites like that. Don't, don't, don't mount anything on them. They're, they're shit because you, you know, like you said, you're going to have to get an 80, 90, hundred dollar, uh, you know, site because not many people put anything on there. So not many companies make stuff for it, even though there's a ton of low profiles. Let me just show off what we're talking about here. So I had a DPMS Oracle. It was my first AR. I bought it a couple of weeks before Sandy Hook and uh, <laughs> couldn't find ammo for it shortly after. So the DPMS Oracle, uh, they're you know advertised many times as a budget AR. Mm -hmm. And they're like $349. So you've got this Picatinny rail up on the upper receiver. And then you've got this lower profile. And I couldn't find a correct riser to bring it up to the same height as the rear. You know, you almost want to just put your flip up front side on the, on the, on the front of that top of your receiver. And you don't want to do that. So right here, you've got this, this gas block Picatinny section that's going to get really hot. It's also about a quarter inch lower than the Picatinny rail that you have on their upper receiver. And so you have to buy an expensive flip-up site that puts it in alignment with your rear side. Otherwise, it's going to be too low, and you're never going to be able to zero. You're going to be shooting low, even though you're going to have everything cranked up all the way. So Great. that's something to consider. There's other firearms that come like that, so watch for that. Make sure it has a standard height gas block on the front. And even then, you're going to have to buy yourself some sort of a flip-up metal front sight. So so in, in my experience, if there's a Picatinny rail on yeah. that gas block, it's going to be low profile. It's not yeah. going to it's not going to be the same height. Um, there are some. There are some rifles that come with the standard height front. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, much, I, I, more, I, I, much more, much more, yeah, much more expensive rifles. Not on these budget ones. Uh, I don't know how if PSA. I've always bought the front A2. You know, the mm-hmm. mounted sights on the front. I I don't know yeah. if there's PSA yeah. does that or or not. Well, but. I mean, let, let's say you do get an eight the A2 gas block, and you that means all you have to do it's not even more money, then, but it'll save you money because you don't even have to worry about that. Uh, but then if you get do get a red dot, you're not going to see that front sight. Yeah. Out of the red dot. Now, scopes, you're going to have to get some sort of a riser plate, at least a one-inch riser to clear that front that front sight. Because uh, I've tried mounting them just a scope, just with the normal height um, uh, mounts with the rings and stuff, and it won't clear the front sight. So I have to get a riser plate to test optics on this channel with uh, with the AR-15s that we have. So keep that in mind. But... Uh, but I mean, but back to the idea of, of the of the iron sights, I would say you if you want to just get yourself an inexpensive set to get yourself into, say you just buy some generic ones off eBay, you know, there's a chance that they might have weak springs in them. They might flop back every time you take a shot. They might not stay. They might not keep zero. I did shoot with a set of, I think, NC Star or UTG iron sights for years, and they were fine. I eventually they just went out on a rifle that ended up selling. I just let the sights go. And those were fine. They would lock in an open position. You push the button to bring them back down. They were like, $30, $40 a set. This was, you know, when Emba sites were still $80 a pair and there were no deals out there. So I went the UTG route or the NC star route. And, uh, you know, I, I would just say, just get a quality set. That's like when it comes to optics, put a little bit of money back, get yourself a quality set in the first place. Then if you ever get another rifle, another gun, you can just take them with you and put them on that rifle. And you're going to have a set that's going to probably come with a lifetime warranty. It's going to hold up better. Um, I, the older I get, the more biased I'm getting towards getting, quality items especially with firearms getting good stuff to bolt on your gun strap on your gun whether we're talking optics or rails or sights or whatnot um you know i've done the cheap flashlight thing on on firearms i've done the cheap dot side thing it's just not worth it your money's better spent getting something quality out of the box and just be done with it you know uh i don't know all of a sudden me no i just i bought a lot of generic stuff that's just been crap tony I've gone through the little twenty, thirty dollar dot sites that wouldn't hold zero. That that you can see the dot drifting as you shoot. I've t- I've okay, tested it for enough of this stuff, so I'm not recommending any one particular brand. I'm saying maybe get something that's not even necessarily battle tested, but something's got a warranty the company's gonna stand behind. I just wanted to check out for the audience whether you're turning into a shill or not. No, no, no. I'm just saying I bought crap before and it's performed like garbage. I've had luck with one sub twenty dollar red dot site that's held up well. It's a knockoff. Bushnell that I bought off of Wish.com that Nice Track actually has on his C three hundred eight. That sucker's been great. But I buy these little these little sites that you see that are marketed by four or five different companies up at Walmart. Little thirty dollar dot site that won't hold zero if it's life dependent on it. Um, especially if you're talking about a defensive tool, defensive weapon, you don't want garbage on that weapon because you don't want it to fail. You want it to shoot accurately when you need to use it. I mean that's just solid advice right across the board. Not that you can't make the twenty dollar set of flip up iron sights work for you. That's fine, but if it's something your life depends on, just don't waste your money on garbage. That's all I'm going to say. My life depends on it. I ain't going to rely on batteries. Well, there you go. That's, you know, that's exactly, exactly. No, I hear you. But I'm just saying in general, I mean, the older I get, I appreciate having clear glass in my optics. I like having, you know, just stuff that's not going to fall apart. I mean, I've tested a lot of stuff on the channel. I've had a lot of things not work. A lot of things fail. And so I, you know, I mean, again, I'm not recommending any one brand, but just, just, you know, try quality items. I think you're going to be a lot happier in the end. I don't know, do you guys agree with me, disagree with me? What do you think? I mean, Foose, have you guys ever tried any just generic red dots or just, you know, off-brand stuff that hasn't worked well for you? I guess I'm not really a, a red <laughs> dot guy. Yeah. The, the second red dot I ever looked through was uh, the one on your uh, AR pistol. So I'm really not a red dot guy. It's not that I'm opposed to them at all. It just... I really just don't have a whole lot of experience with optics in general. And yeah. I, I know I need to get into the optics game. I will get into the optics. Actually, that's a 2019 thing is you get a, an optic for my Henry. But um, for me, I believe that learning the fundamentals of marksmanship on irons mm-hmm. will make you a better marksman than jumping right in on optics. And I know today they got the kids going into the military and they just hand them an M6 or an M4 with an optic on them and they're not teaching them how to uh, dope their sights and, and 
do things the old fashioned way. And I know some yeah. younger people are absolutely opposed to that. Oh, that's work. Ugh. Well, <laughs> there's a there's a reason why learning how to do stuff manually not only helps you do it with technology better, but also helps you appreciate it. And if there's ever a situation like what Tony's talking about, where you, your batteries go bad, you drop the rifle, your optic goes down, whatever it is, you you your your weapon is no no longer uh, in the fight, and you've got to pick up something. And all you've got is somebody's old clunky gun, you know, like mine, that's only got irons and you don't know what the heck you're doing. Um, you know, I mean, I could go on and on with other reasons. And, and if, if those reasons aren't good enough for you don't you don't want reasons, you just want your optic, get your optic. But I think the reason that you might have got this question or why we hear this question come up a lot is because in the same sense, I don't know, Jack, about optics up. Oh, they're coming for you, Tony. <laughs> they're coming for you <laughs> in the same sense that i don't know a whole lot about optics there's a lot of younger shooters out there that don't know or not even necessarily younger shooters people that got into shooting after sandy hook there is a butt ton of people in our community that didn't really do much with except maybe uh target shoot with grandpa or go hunting once or or some something like that they really weren't gun people and then sandy hook happened and suddenly it's like i need to jump in the fight well they just they better late than not at all, but still the whole thing is at this point uh, or, or at that point, ARs were mainstream. Used to be they weren't mainstream. At that point, optics, even if it's just a red dot, were mainstream. They weren't mainstream before. At that point, plastic magazines were mainstream. Those weren't mainstream before. <laughs> so yes. Yes. for those of you who are new to this or those of you who who are were old enough to get into guns after some of the, the, the stuff that is is average every day today uh, started becoming average every day. If you take the time to go back and look at the older stuff, you might not only get to understand it, but get to appreciate it. And I'm not saying that one is necessarily better than the other, but I think it's it's kind of like the whole reloading thing. It's getting over the hump of jumping into it and doing it. If yeah. you don't know jack about iron sights you're a bit intimidated and then when you go see the price do i get this 20 dollars set or do i get this 200 dollars set and some people think that spending a lot of money will buy them accuracy and to some extent it will and other people are like i, I paid 300 dollars for this ar i ain't st sticking another penny into it uh, it's i think so some people are going to have to do some trial and error so, but I would say rely on some of the older guys like us to take you out to the range and show you on a platform that we've got with iron sights before you go purchase iron sights of your own, maybe. Well, that or look and, you know, look at really reviews, go out to firearm experts, stuff like that, that actually use their their guns and see what they recommend. All of them are going to be metal. It's going to be Magpul. Um it's going to be Troy. It's going to be something like that. Yankee uh, Hill Machine. Yeah, that's another good one. Yankee Hill Machine's usually a little, little bit bulkier than the other two, but also a little cheaper. Um, but whenever it comes to, you know, irons and, and optics and stuff like that is no matter what you buy, that's still the cheap part. If you use a firearm like like it's supposed to be used. Uh, Travis, you know, you, you could chime in on this. You pay, you pay $500 for uh, a Glock or your, uh, uh, or an AR. If you run it the way it's supposed to be ran, you'll spend a lot more in ammo than you will yeah. in the gun. If you, if you are a avid shooter um, and you get something other than, you know your, your your bolt actions that you go hunting. Yeah, the gun will be more expensive than your ammo. Well, but it you, depends, man. I've burned a lot on six five Creed more in the last month. <laughs> right, right, right. But you're using it for other things other than hunting. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah I, I'm hunting. saying people are like, oh, I'm going to buy this this Woodstock gun for hunting. Yeah, you may put a box of ammo through a year, and yeah. that's it. Yeah. If you go out and you actually use a rifle for what you what it's made for is to shoot. 
no matter how much the gun is, that's always the cheap part. Yeah. So uh, same with optics. Same with, uh, um, side. You know your iron sights. Get quality stuff that isn't going to move around on you. There's and there's I, a lot of people. You, go ahead, guys. I'll tell you. I have last about a year ago now, February anyway. I bought a seven hundred fifty dollar forty five seventy lever action gun, and I am fixing to drop two hundred bucks plus for a lime in sight on the back of it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I got no qualms about spending money for something that does what it's supposed to. You know, so I don't dispute that whole buy quality. Right. Uh, especially when it comes to stuff that's. Uh, requires um, extremely tight tolerances and stuff, you know, when you want precision. Yeah, and, and, and there's a whole thing, you know, you know, buy once, cry once type thing. Would you rather buy a $350 AR, you know, shoot 200 rounds and be like, okay, I need, I want something better. Sell that for, you know, $200, then go out and buy something else, turn around, sell that, and, you know, keep upgrading like that. Or do you want to say, okay, I'm going to go mid range, you know, don't go out and buy a two thousand dollar AR, not even a thousand dollar AR. Maybe go out and spend seven eight hundred dollars. Well I'll yeah. tell you, honestly, it seems to me that the AR community of dudes out there is always wanting something else. You know, something no matter what yes. they buy, they're gonna to want to do something else. Yeah. So yeah. so so that's why like if you could get into into a rifle. Let, let, let's say you you build you buy a three hundred and fifty dollar rifle. Well, by the time you are done with it, the only thing you'll probably have left of that rifle is the lower. You you will probably replace, oh, and and maybe the um the um buffer tube. Yeah, I mean. That's why I advise people, if they have any mechanical inclination at, at all, and it doesn't require a lot, people, if you can do if you can do disc brakes on your car, you can assemble, not build, assemble an AR-15. I recommend that you buy the lower receiver and you put it together with the parts that you want your way the first time. So, so if you so, want a fancy trigger, get a fancy trigger. If you want a, a stock that's available but nobody sells it on their store-bought AR, get that stock. If you want... Whatever kind of upper, because there's more uppers, complete uppers you can buy out there than there are kinds of complete rifle. Yeah. So, so yes and no. If you don't know, if you if this is your first rifle, I would say go out to a website that sells uppers and lowers and buy an upper, buy a lower that you want. Um, then, yeah, you can modify it later. But if you... If you've been out there and shooting a little bit, yeah, absolutely. Build your first or assemble your first, I, sh I should say. If it's your first rifle or like if it's your, no, no, sorry, not if it's your first rifle. If, if it's your first gun or maybe even first rifle, you know, I, I was into guns previously and all my ARs are home assembled, but I knew kind of what I wanted going into it. If it was my very first, well, my, my, my very first lower was an assembled lower. Um, because I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know how to put them together. I didn't do the research. Um, if it's your first one, buy, buy them assembled, buy an upper, buy a lower assembled. Don't, and to our, where, where all you have to do is your two pins and you're off to the races. Do that. And then figure out, but you know, figure out what you really want. But if if you're out there, and you're an avid shooter, and you know what's, you know, you know how to do your research, and and you know what you want, build it yourself. If you buy a complete lower and you buy a complete upper, you're still going to get a greater variety of choices yes. than if you buy a store bought rifle. If all you want is an AR, just to have an AR because you're afraid they're going to come for guns, and you got to get one now while the getting's good. And you go get a store bought. That's fine. If you say I can't even screw in a light bulb, let alone do a brake job on a car, there's no way I can put together an AR. 
Okay, fine. But otherwise, I just say you're throwing away your money. And I'm, now it's your money to throw away. Now, you were talking about buying a cheap gun, then flipping it, losing money on it, and then getting a mid-range gun, and then uh, mm -hmm. flipping that, losing money on it. Now, see, you might look at it as I'm losing hundreds of dollars, but you're learning. Right. Learning costs mm -hmm. money. Mm -hmm. Learning. So if you buy it, you learn off of it. You sell it at a loss. Don't look at it as a loss. Look at it as you paid for a learning opportunity. If you have no clue what you like, what you want. I knew because I was in the military. My first AR was a clone, a semi-auto only clone of an M16A2 with government issue parts and everything. And I knew how, and I didn't even have armor's tools and I put it together last century. And I, 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 I did it because the AWB made all of the uh, compliant rifles that were brand new production cost way more than putting one together yourself. So I only did it to get what I wanted and to save money. And I bought a pre band lower. They were still plentiful and it was not a big deal. But now that may not be for everybody. Right now, they're so cheap, fully assembled, it, until you find out, oh, it don't come with sights. And then you spend another $100 or more in sights that um, it's okay. But these prices go up, they go down. So when the AR start costing, when the cheap AR start costing $1,200 again, you might want to look at building one as, a, as an option, only well, because that's the only way you can afford it. Well, but what well, I'm yeah. saying, though, is if you get that base model one, from the store and go, I got an AR now. And then you say, oh, I don't like this grip. Oh, I don't like this stock. Oh, I don't like it. You're, yeah, either you're going to go buy a whole nother rifle or you're going to end up tearing the thing down and replacing every part on it. Oh, yeah. And if you just bought the parts to begin with. So you know, there are stores, like, like if you truly do not know what you want, there are stores that have all this stuff. And they'll actually build... They'll, they'll they will assemble it for you like you, like I know there's one up in um, Missouri I've never bought from them I'm not associated with them tactical shit um, up in St. Louis yeah that's their name tactical shit yeah um, I, I anyway but you go in there and say I want to you know they'll have a whole bunch of you know milled forged receivers and that's where you start and you're like okay what kind of butt stock do you want and they'll have you know 12 different styles figure out what you I, want what kind of grip what kind of trigger what kind of bolt carrier what kind of barrel what and you assemble it there yeah it's going to be high a, a little bit higher than if you went out and bought it yourself but what if you went out and you bought a, a troy grip and you're really wanting a mag pool well then you're spending an extra 30 40 bucks on a grip that's going to be in a drawer i think you know. that what I was talking about earlier might have been misinterpreted. I mean, I think after they get done with building their rifle, then they decide they want something else. Yeah. So well, it's a never-ending cycle of working on the thing. All right, my, mine, uh, uh, well, no, not really. Not really. This is a way... The this, there, there's a way around it. Or not around it, but there's a way... You just go get another receiver, and you build a whole other rifle. You keep the one that you built and you put all that money into instead of tearing it down and changing every single part out like you would on a Glock, right? Uh, you just build another one. And before you know it, you got a safe full of these damn things. Maybe uh, you'll come across somebody who likes one of the ones you got. <laughs> that's like uh, six of one half does the other, Scribby. You're still building another AR. I mean, I and I'm not hacking on anybody for that. I'm just saying that that's the way... The guys that are really the AR guys, that's the way it strikes me that they are. And, well, no, and I, again, I uh, think, bring, go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, bringing it, bringing it back to the idea of, of the red dots and the optics, again, it's it, you get that inexpensive red dot, oh, it's okay, it's not the best, or it falls apart, then you buy the next step up, and then you buy the next step up. And I just want to say a lot of guys are chiming in on the YouTube side and the gun channel side. Like, they've... They found this this quality, you know, budget price optic and it's working for them, or they've got this inexpensive set of flip up sites. If it works for if it works fine for you, that's great. And you might have good luck. Like me, like I said, I've got a twenty dollar knockoff bush Nell that just keeps running and keeps zero. But uh, you do start to notice a bit of a difference as you start to go up the price game a little bit. And again, Philo had a pretty good point. The gap between quality quality, you know, red dots and, and iron sights and inexpensive stuff is really starting to narrow. 
Like you don't have to spend four hundred fifty dollars to have a good red dot anymore. You could get something from Vortex or Primary Arms, or you could go Hollow Sun and get something for say one fifty, or get like a six hour Romeo, whatever, and have a nice red dot for one hundred fifty bucks. That's gonna last. It's gonna work. It's gonna take the. It's gonna take the uh, the, the abuse that you're gonna dish to it. You know, I'm just saying maybe go with something that that I don't want to say brand name, but I'm just saying you know maybe go something a little bit higher quality with the with the manufacturer that's gonna stand behind their warranty. That's going to save you a lot of grief down the road because I've wasted a lot of money buying inferior products that have either broken, fallen apart, not kept zero. The the hardware's crap, won't stay threaded to the barrel, to the rail, whatever. That's all I'm I, saying is, you know. I can't wait for the day that we have that uh, first EMP strike from Ruskies or Chinese or whatever. All you guys with these battery operated optics yeah. are freaking <laughs> panicking. Tony, I got a carry handle on this one right here, and I got flip up iron sights over here. I'm going to be okay. In the meantime, but, I like the red dot to make it easy on my eyes. But but the iron sights and the optics are are they run hand in hand with a stock or grips or a, a muzzle device or or uh, even what caliber barrel end twist rate? The list goes on and on. Material. Uh, it's all about accessorizing and options, and the fact that. The AR is the go-to platform, and the AR is uh, one of the most modular things out there that you can customize and everything else. That's kind of how the whole optics led into the whole uh, assembly uh, versus purchase. Um, the the thing, though, that Foosh said, though, that stuck out with me was about um, watching videos or listening to, to these, uh, these expert shooters uh, give their take on, on what they like. I, I disagree with that completely. I've watched some of these videos from these guys that win these these championships every year again and again and again. And they've got all these sponsors and stuff. And I've watched them show you the right way to shoot a gun. And I'm going, you're kidding, right? Oh, that might work for you. And that might get you your your trophy. No, 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 but you no. also you also get paid to do this. No. If I got paid to do this, I'd have a trophy too. No, no, I don't no. necessarily trust their, you know, when they say, when they say, well, what do you think about grips for an AR-15? And then you find out the guy never was in the military? I'm not really so sure I so, trust his opinion. So, so, hold on. You you took what I said. Uh, maybe I didn't uh, put it clearly. That's not that's not what I was meaning. I'm not, I'm not talking about competition guys. Like, if someone wants their first, you know, pistol, you come to me. I'm not going to show you my competition stuff because it's it's for a different thing. If you want, if you want to get into competition, yeah, come talk to me. I will I will uh, steer you correctly. Um, if you're wanting, you know, concealed carry, I I could point you in the right dire direction, but I'm not going to take you to a gun that you will eventually want because I'm not, a, you know, a big concealed carry guy. I mean, I do it sometimes, but I don't, that's not my forte. So don't, you know, figure out what you want. If you want an AR, go out to someone that runs ARs, not competition, because yes, they are ARs, but those are so tricked up, slicked up, that need more maintenance, um, usually, like my, you know, a lot of the um, guns in competition need more maintenance. We run lighter springs. That they break more, stuff like that. Um, if you want an so, AR, join gun channels and seek out a dude <laughs> named Dead Horse. Yeah, no kidding. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and that's it, Foose. I would go to you or Dead Horse or some of the other people on gun channels for your opinion on a product before I watched a video from Joe Blow, multi-millionaire. I'm, I've been... <laughs> You know, yeah, I'm, yeah, 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 yeah. I run so and so training institute, and I've been on TV. Kind of, I'm sorry, but some of those guys, they're, they're I'm sure they're nice people, and I'm not saying they 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 don't have skill, but some of them, it's just like, look, dude, this is what you do for a living. Right. If I got paid to sell cars for a living, I may not necessarily sell you the right car or the best car or whatever. I'm just there to sell you a damn car. And so. but 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 the thing is, like like let, let's say you go to these. Um, these trainers. Let's let's say you go and okay, Chris Costa, um, uh, the Viking tackle guys, Larry uh, Vickers, um, 
and then Jaeger you know, and stuff like that. Don't just go or don't watch one YouTube video or one YouTube video channel for your information. Go out there and seek what is common to all of them because each of each one will have a common thread. Like, let's say you get into optics. None of them are going to ha- probably have a, a spark. Um, yeah, they'll be they'll running have aim, aim point. point, EOTech. Yeah. Yeah, and that's just it. They sell these high dollar items because they're paid to. No, these no, high dollar no. items might work. They might work. And they and like you were saying, this is their this is their race gun. This is their competition gun. This is not the rifle you take out into the woods and go deer hunting with. Yes, you could. Yes, you could, or home defense, or whatever it is. But and if that's what you want to build, if you want to build a, a rifle that you only take to a shooting competition to get that damn trophy, then maybe you do want to do what these guys do, uh, assuming that you can imitate their their technique and everything else but for your average every day i just want to go to the range and throw lead and i don't really care i mean i don't know how many people i see out there that don't give a crap about learning they just want to throw lead down range so so if if you you, in in that scenario you have to go out and 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 seek out the information for what you want to do if you want to be you know you know walking through the woods well a uh, spark will be fine if you just want to throw down, uh, you know, ra- uh, lead at the range. One of those B- Bushnell TR twenty fives could yeah. be fine because it goes from your safe to a bag to a range. Mm-hmm. It's not going to get bumped around. Uh, BR twenty five right, out in the woods. That advice on an optic coming from you means more to me than that advice on an optic coming from Joe Blow. Uh, you know, gun store, Joe Blow competition shooter, Joe Blow trainer, Joe Blow optics rep, Joe Blow YouTuber, whatever it is, because you just said it in, in a regular way that a regular guy can understand. And especially somebody who's trying to get in, you just came at it from different. If you want yeah. this, go to this. If you want this, go to this. Isn't what you're hearing on these videos. You need right. to buy but, this five thousand dollar optic because I said so. That's the, what you hear on these videos. Right, right. but but that that's why it is up to the consumer to do their research into what their use is going to be. Like I, I'm a computer programmer. I'm not going to go out there and look at the latest hardware shit because I write software. No, I'm going to go out there and look at. the software techniques tools and stuff like that to interact with hardware i, I don't you know give a shit um but it, turn this back to firearms yeah. if you're a weekend a weekend planker you go to channels that are weekend uh weekend plankers like mr guns and gear great channel because he is a weekend planker he doesn't do all the tactical stuff he reviews the product that's good um if you want a little bit more hard abuse go to these firearms instructors and see a commonality across them so you don't get the uh the bias of oh i'm sponsored by so and so if you are looking into competition just don't go out to an individual like you know a walther rep or a cz rep go out you know to a match and handle guns go Go and, and seek what you want. Seek your your use. If it if you're just you know going going through the woods, a spark's fine because it could take some abuse, but you're not going to sit there and bash it on a rock. You know, twenty four seven crawling through the woods. You know, craw- crawling to your destination or whatever. But some, something I want to caution people out there about these YouTube guys, especially YouTube guys that buy the stuff that they're showing you want to listen carefully because oftentimes people will not admit to themselves that they've made a mistake yeah i just want to just want to cover it up and make the review just yeah. to get it out there basically i think travis the way you handle your videos you cover things in an unbiased way and i think that you kind of cover things for the the average you know, whether it be entry level to experience, but looking to get something new kind of guy, you're not there trying to sell to, uh, you know, the guy that just 
we'll plump five thousand dollars down on the rifle alone and then just go and i'm not saying look if you've got the money spend the money and if you want to if you want to buy the exact same gun that Joe Blow Shooter uses to win the, the Bianchi Cup or whatever, go for it. It's your money. Do what you want. Also, if somebody's sponsored, I, I don't see, I don't always see a problem with that because that's kind of capitalism and that's the American way. It's when they, they sell out to the point where they're telling you something, they're lying right to their teeth and they know it and they still do it because it's so all about getting the paycheck. If you can, if you can balance giving giving good information and making a living, you're really living the American dream so, at that point. So, so skill. So, so I, I'm going to take this from uh, another point of view. Um, as as a shooter, if you are not a shooter and you go to the range the first time, most likely you will be horrible. But if you practice, let's say. 10 minutes a day on trigger squeeze and side alignment, you will get dramatically better in a short amount of time. But then let's say you, you're doing that and you're now able to put to pull two inch groups at 25 yards to, but before you may, might've been at 10 inch groups or 20 inch groups at 25 yards. But so to go from, let's say, 10 inch groups, 25 yards to go down to two inch group at 25 yards. That may take you a month and a half, two months of, of five, 10 minutes a day practice, but go from a two inch group to a one inch group at 25 yards. I'm talking about offhand pistol, nine millimeter, stuff like that. Um, it, it, it may take you six, eight months of more practice. So you, you, the more you, you, you could, Translate that to firearms. If you buy a, th uh, let's say, a $300 AR versus a $600 AR, that $600 AR may be substantially better than a $600 to $1,000 AR. Those are much closer. A $1,000 AR to a $5,000 AR, those are going to be much closer in performance than that $300 AR and that $600 AR. But in the same sense that you're talking about snapping in to improve your accuracy without throwing lead down range and all that, that does work. I learned that in the military. We did a whole lot of that, and it does make a big difference. In the same sense, learning on iron sights before you go to an optic. When I was shooting Travis's AR pistol, that's only the second time I've looked down a, a red dot, and um, I had never shot an AR pistol before. And my accuracy was just fine. I felt like I was cheating. I actually <laughs> felt like, because I was using yes. the, the, the grip technique on the rifle, the, the trigger squeeze, the breathing, the, the side alignment, the side picture, everything, the, the eye relief, everything I did as if I was shooting it with iron sights. And it made, with that red dot, it made it too easy. I mean, way so, too easy. Yeah, so yes. if you jump in on a red dot and then you go backwards to iron sights, it might be really difficult okay. for somebody to do that. Okay, it, 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 it could be yes, but see, with shooting a firearm, there are so many, um, so many things to take in. You know, trigger press. Are you aiming in the right direct? Uh, are you aiming in the correct area? Um, cheek weld, grips, all this stuff. Like starting a new shooter out, I would probably two day start them, start them out with an iron with a red dot first because there's so many variables out there. Get them shooting a red dot to where they're like, okay, I can sit there and, you know, recoil mitigation. Your, your trigger press is good. Your grip is repeatable. Your, you know, everything else is good. Then let's take the iron. Let's, let's take the red dot off and shoot your irons to where all, everything else is out of play because the shooter's already used to it, and then go to your irons. Now, see, I go backwards to that. I take kids out, and I teach them with iron sights first, and they pick it quick, quicker than adults that don't shoot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, kids, once you tell them you put this <clears throat> post right in the center, right on your target, and you're good, they've got it figured out within just minutes. Okay, with, with AR style, with the... Uh, peep sight, yeah. 
Um, I, I was thinking, you know, going back to like the traditional V notch and uh, post. The V notch is a lot. It's a more. lot more difficult. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I bought cricket rifles and they come with that little peep aperture thing on them. God, they're great. Now, again, the with the viewer request, they they wanted some recommendations, and I think that after showing off what we did on those iron sights, you know, those are great ways to get going into it, or just buying a gun that already has irons on it right out of the box. That's a great way to learn how to shoot, right? Um, recommendations for some red dots. I just want to throw a couple out there. And again, I am not sponsored. These are just red dots I have experience with that have held up over lots and lots of, of rounds of shooting. I would say on the low budget end, and there's probably somebody that's going to say, oh, you can get this one for thirty or forty bucks, or get that one. Um, if you're going to get anything at all, and Fusi had mentioned this before, the Bushnell TRS-25, I think it's a nice kind of entry-level red dot that's going to hold up well. You can get them on sale. Sometimes you can find it for $65, 70 bucks. If you look around online, they also make a uh, higher mount for it, too, if you got a clearer front sight, if you got an iron sight, say, on your AR. And again, Tony, I'm not opposed at all to learning how to shoot with irons. That's how I learned how to shoot, too, was on a single-shot, bolt-action, 22. I don't even know what it was when I was a kid. Um, and then when it comes time to go the red dot route, this is a relatively inexpensive way to get into it. And I say inexpensive, it's not my money, but it just runs on CR 2032 batteries. Uh, you got a pretty good warranty with it and so on. And then, you know, if you want to step up a little bit and go with something a little more expensive or something, I don't know. I don't even want to say more durable, but maybe something a little more well-known. Again, the Vortex Spark is a good option. The Romeo 5 is a good option. I have used Trigicon before. I've never used Aimpoint. I have used Trigicon and EOTech on the weapons I've, I've tested on the channel before. They're great. They're cool. They're just out of my price point. The most expensive optic that I run at all is the $179 uh, Vortex Strike Fire 2 that I keep on my uh, Bear Creek Arsenal AR-15. So you don't have my to break the bank on a red dot. I went with this one because it has a lifetime warranty. Uh, they seem to be fairly durable. I read great reviews on them. Uh, I watched a couple channels for a long time that had used them extensively on their guns, and they've held up. My, my whole point on this whole thing is, is that mm -hmm. you should always take your gun back to its lowest basic denominator mm -hmm. or the way it'll function. And that's if the worst happens to happen, mm -hmm. you know, you better be able to shoot that thing without an electric sight. Oh, I agree totally. I agree totally. I, I still love just just plinking around with irons on without having the red dots on or the it's sometimes it's kind of an annoyance, you know, on the channel. I always have to zero all these optics and all these weapons. That's not the fun part. The fun part is once it's actually going, but I still love to just go back, just straight up iron sights. To me, that's always the most enjoyable aspect of doing some shooting. Uh real quick, guys, Ghost Tactical is joining us. Ghost, you want to say a few words? And uh, also I gotta ask you, since you're here, what is your firearms resolution for 2019? Buy more. <laughs> more, more guns, more ammo. Yeah, more guns, more ammo. I mean, as far as that, um, I, I mean, I don't know if I'm going to buy that many more. Um, I'm you just going to enjoy review. the ones, huh? You want to review a bunch? I, I, I don't, I don't do a lot. Of, I don't like doing a lot of gun reviews. I mean, it's, I, I, if I get a gun to review, I'm looking for guns that there's not 2,500 reviews out there by other people already. I'm, if I want to do a review, I want to do it for something that's out there that maybe people haven't seen before and all that. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's 25,000 Glock 19 reviews, you know, there's 25,000 Breda 92 reviews. So I love to do reviews for guns that may be a little different, but uh, more than anything else, I just want to get out and shoot a lot more this next, this next year. What I'm loving how I you're doing you. long-term tests too. You're showing off guns that you put thousands of rounds through. That's good to know about because Many times you get sold on, even myself, I might only run 50 to 100 rounds through a gun when I test it, when I fire it the first time, just to see how it runs. But I can't yeah. ever make a recommendation for long-term durability. Ghost, we well, hook up at Wanamaker, and I'll let you uh, review my uh, Ruger Vaqueros because I know there's not a shit so, ton of them out there in 44 Magnum. So, so I'm going to have to of, walk away with those, Tony. I'm just saying. You know, so, just so, saying. So, so speaking of Wanamaker... <laughs> I have that Thursday, Friday, and Monday on vacation. Who all's going? I can't make it to show <laughs> Travis is like, Shit. I burn my days seeing Metallica in September, my personal day, so I do apologize. I am I'm going to try like to make it, but my, oh. my problem is, is I've got to go to NRA two weeks later up in Indianapolis, so now I've got to fly up there. So I'm going to try to uh, well, I mean, budget my time and all that. Okay. My like daughter's it. going on full time in the army, so I'm going to have her kids then. So I can't take them with. It's a family show. It's a family. No, event. 
no. Strap so, in the car seat, tell them to shut up, and hit the highway, man. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I'll probably show up, but I'll probably only be there Saturday and Sunday. I probably won't fine. come up there Friday morning and go to uh, J.M. Davis. I've been there so many times at this point, you know. I, I've only been to J.M. Davis twice now. But, I, I mean, I, I didn't know if we were going to do range day or whatever. Um, so, hey, now, we do quick, a range day, I might show up. But can we, can we <laughs> for anybody that might be a new listener, we keep saying Wanamaker, Wanamaker. They probably have no idea what we're talking about. Can somebody okay. just sum up the one? What is Wanamaker? So, so it, it's – like, it, if you want to look into it, don't type in Watermaker Gun Show because you'll never spell Watermaker right. No, just I, just t- type in Tulsa Gun Show, yes. and it'll be the first one. Tulsa, T-U-L-S-A. Tulsa, Oklahoma. It is the world's largest gun show. If you put all of the tables back to back, it's about five miles long. Um, yeah, the building's, what, 11 acres inside? 11 acres under one roof. If um, you hit every table, you have 40 seconds to hit every table. and you're thought, still not gonna have yeah, something like that. You only get a few yeah. seconds per table, and then you'd run out of time at the end of the weekend. If you only ever go to one gun show, and I speak from experience, make it Wanamaker. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it, it's because you will find stuff from the 1800s all the way to present. Anything and everything. Like There are definitely themes. In, in the spring, there's a theme. In the fall, there's a... You, definitely tell there's a different theme to it um you know right now you're you're seeing more world war one rifles because we are we just did finish the uh the uh, century um centurial uh centennial centennial thank you um of world war one so there is a upturn of world war one um interest so you you are seeing some stuff like that. I, I you can see some labels. You can see, um, you know, German stuff. You know, O threes. You can see, you know, Lee Enfields, the the Mark ones, and stuff like that. So it's, yeah, it, it's interesting. Um, I'll tell you what surprised me more than anything was the number of Winchester seventy threes, authentic ones. That it was I heavy see. on the cowboy guns last year. It was heavy on the uh, the, le- the the lever guns and the revolvers. And, you know, they said that it changes every year, and this was kind of coming off of the black rifle purchase hangover of pre-election 2016. That's where there wasn't a lot of black rifles, you know, ARs and AKs they're like you would expect at a gun show because they had all. But a lot of those inventories had not been replenished because sales had slowed down post-election. So that's why we just didn't see a lot of them. But I mean, God, if you want. Well, Everything was there, man. It was like, yeah. You, you could yeah. like earlier in the chat how we said if you're not sure what you want to buy with in, in, in an AR, there's two or three booths where you could pay, build an AR the way you want to. Yeah, yeah. Right there. Build-a-bear. They had the build a bear line. You just pick your components and then put it together for you, and you check out at the end of the line. Literally, they, you they, choose the components you want for that AR. Mm-hmm. The furniture. They the had a Gatling gun get there for sale. Yeah. yeah, I know. There's we, cannons. Gatling guns. And I had it carried out to the car. We, we did um, a video on that, by the way. Th- there are <laughs> there's class threes. There's full autos for sale there. Absolutely. Um, like the the one of the guns, like like oh, what gun sticks out to you that was for sale? And it was like a a Persian gun made in the 1600s. Yeah, it had a price tag of 180 thousand on it, but. It's just to see something like that still around to this day outside of a museum. Well, I think what was really cool is if you remember last November, Foose, we were there, and there was a guy that had, uh, I don't know if it was an estate or his just own personal collection, but he had about 15 tables. And a guy came in Saturday afternoon, offered him a million dollars for the lot. Yep. He took the million dollars. There, A crew literally came in. It was right down from where we were. Mm-hmm. A crew mm-hmm. came in, boxed it up, took it on a truck, and left, and he was done. He mm-hmm. sold his stuff for a million dollars right mm-hmm. then and there. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, that, that's not normal. That's not normal <laughs> No, but, all. like, you can see but, anything at Wanamaker. Yeah. <laughs> it's, Absolutely. it's awesome. Just don't don't volunteer or be volunteer at G-Webs to have to take a Gatling gun out to somebody's vehicle. Because, first of all, <laughs> They won't let you just roll it out of there. It has to come out in parts. They won't let. And they don't let you shoot it either. No, and you have to carry it out, and they are very heavy. And then you have to carry it to the car assembled, and then disassemble it, and then load it. 
<laughs> second, second piece of advice is if you're not selling guns, leave your gun in the car because you do not want to stand in line for an hour and a half when it's record freaking cold in Tulsa, Oklahoma. So, so yeah, like like this this time I you know I, I I'm gonna be taking a couple guns to sell, at least two. Um, what do you got? Um. Uh, don't you say macro up, so help me God, I will beat you. <laughs> he will jump through that phone value. line and slap you <laughs> like a little child. That macro is my name is on that macro when you're ready to move it out. Um, no, We're not going to – this is a non-negotiable foose. No, no, no. no. If, if I decide to sell that, it will be going to you. Um, okay. Hey, right. Foose, call me offline, and uh, we'll talk about that macro off real quick. Yeah. What's going on? What's, this is, there's something broken here. What's the – No, uh, no. It, it's <laughs> – I, I have um, a 93 pattern – mauser that was made in 1894 that has been rechambered to 308 i picked it up at a watermaker a year or so ago it, it, it's the one i foosed off of um um p226 oh, you got that last november yeah i remember yeah. that yeah that that one i'm gonna you rechambered it or did you or was it already rechambered it was already 308 oh okay okay so that one and then i also picked up another one last year at Arasaka, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that as well. Um, that I picked up six, five. Um, so yeah. Um, and I, and I may have, I, I'm, uh, I may have one or two others, um, depending, but yeah. yeah. Oh, man. All right. So now that we're talking about old guns and gun shows and so on, we're going to move into the last topic for today, which is the Curio and Relic, the CNR FFL. Do we call it a Class 3 license? Is that correct? No. An FFL 03 license? It's an right? 03. Class 3 is totally... All right. Class 3 is your full <laughs> auto suppressors, your NFA items. Okay. So I've been educating myself on the Curio and Relic, and this is a message that came to me from viewer... Atypical Jake, um, if I'm not mistaken, he had said that this is something he's going to get. He wanted us to, to, to discuss this as a topic. Said it might make a fun topic. Do you go? Let, let's just talk about what is what is a CNR license. If any of you guys want to explain it, great. So, if not, I can yeah. do it. What's a CNR so, license? CNR license, cur curio and relic. Basically, anything over well, it, whenever it started, it was anything over 50 years old. Now they actually have a book of what is a CNR of every firearm by name of what is on the list. Um, CNR is, you know, usually 50 years old or older. It's for your own records. I mean, your, your own, own collection. So let's say Travis gets his CNR and he buys it. Like, let's say he goes out and buys a bunch of world war one rifles. He cannot legally flip them and sell them for a profit. Like if he wants, you know, 15 Gewehr 98s and he buys them and he only keeps one and sells 14, that you are breaking the laws of the, the CNR. Um, it yeah. is basically for you, for your own personal stash. That I does think not they mean can you... also be they can also be certified by a museum or something like that. Could they not for a museum? Um, yes, yeah. I think that's part of it. Also, yeah. I think. Yeah, I, you, you, you could donate away. You, you can sell this stuff. You just can't be in it for the business of selling. Yes, yeah, so it's it's more for your curing your private. Client, yes, so I'm not, I'm actually con contemplating getting that. So it it's it's thirty dollars for three years. And it get, those firearms can get shipped straight to your door. Exactly here's, here's what where, I was thinking. Tony, here's where it gets tempting. You do a CNR firearms for sale search on online, and it's a lot of those guns that you're already looking at anywhere, a lot of those mill serps that you've been thinking about mm -hmm. buying. Mm -hmm. We're even talking pistols here, guys. We're talking like I've seen the P64s, the mm -hmm. Tokarevs. Those are all CNR mm -hmm. qualified. Just do a CNR firearms for sale search on Google. And there's a ton of places that come up selling them. You're not going to get another yeah. price, but go, you're going to save the cost of a transfer, and it's coming right to your home. Go out to Classic Firearms and go to their CNR area. All they your Mosins like, are CNR. Okay. They, they only all all your Mousers. Yeah, they had a few guns for sale. There's places that have more, but Classic's a good starting place. But well, you'll well, be surprised what pops up. Well, well yeah. no, you know they only have a few for sale, but it has a list of stuff that 
yeah. is for sale. All your K31s. Um, I mean, technically, by you the go. first definition of it, you're um, you're back on me, Travis. Yep. Here he goes. This. Yeah. Is that better now? Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. Te te technically, it's supposed to be anything over fifty years old. So technically, there are there should be some AR receivers out there that are CNRs, but they're not because they're ARs. But yeah, right here. This you also get all that stuff gets shipped you straight a, to your house. Gets you a yes. fast track into the CMP program too. Is that right? I don't I have know this about license. There's something about that that gives you a preference for if you're going to buy some guns from the CMP civilian marksmanship program. Uh, but yeah, there's tons and tons of guns that show. It's a lot more than just mm -hmm. the Tokarev or a lot more than just, you know, the P64. There's, yeah, if you do see in our search on Gun Broker, mm -hmm. there's uh, 3,116 items that pop up for sale. Like you said, a lot of your Mausers, Type 53 carbines. Mm -hmm. um, I'll tell you one that I'm looking forward to yeah. getting maybe is like a Walther um, P1 because there are okay. so many modern firearms that are that took a lot of design from the P1 these days that people don't realize, go. but that, that old Walther, man, I think was a classic. We can get yeah. you one uh, 599 to start. Otherwise you're looking at 800 out the door. And that's really not that bad considering, you know? Yeah. yeah. Oh, wait, yeah. wait, wait, wait. Click on that third one. Yeah. This guy right here. Yeah. This was the, uh, the man Huron P1 P38 French Mauser nine millimeter. What the hell? What is that? I mean, it's it's. Here's the markings on it, so you can see it. The right. manufacturer says made in France. Uh, that, had, that had to have been a German gun manufactured well, in France. I mean, well, it, it well, couldn't have been a French. You know what I'm saying? No, no. But but it, but what it could have done is they could have well, had man. a. That they could have had a um, a plant in France and then overtaken it, and it was. That's in what I'm saying. Property, it, was, yeah. it was occupied France. I'm sure you know. Well, no, 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 it still would have been. It, it wouldn't have those markings on there. It, it, it was. This is P one or P yes P one. It's post World War Two because that's what all P ones are. Right. So you, are, it's probably a factory that was built by the Germans in France, and then after the war, it was in French government. So they just are French um, owned. So they went ahead and built it. Are there any 740s or 742s on that list? I'll be right back. What's that, Tony? I said, is Remington 740 or 742 on that list? I'll just we'll do a search for you and find out. That's the problem with the CNR, man. If you're thinking about trying to save money, here you go. 740 Woodmaster 30 out 6, True Glow Scope, 1959, starting bid 400. That's pretty pricey, but. No, it's gun broker. But I'm just saying this is a, this is not necessarily where you want to go to buy. It's a good place to kind of window shop to just, see what's out there on the CNR license. I was just curious if they were on it or not. Yeah, 1959. Uh, make it 50 years old, right? Uh, 19. Well, as of 2019, they'll be if it's 1959. No, 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 no. Hell, I was 61. I was born in 61. I'm 57. For Christ's sake, I can't even do math this morning. I'm not a math teacher, Tony. Yeah, and in, in 2009, they would have been qualified for the. Uh, for CNR collectibles. But again, if you just do, again, CNR searches, j and sales, they got 157 uh, rifles, pistols, revolvers for sale. A lot of this stuff you don't even realize. Now, again, you're going to pay a premium for some of this stuff because they are collectibles, but there's also some good deals. Just the idea, again, of being able to have it delivered to your home. Now, we need to talk about the one negative to all this. I think that a lot of people, the convenience is going to come at a price in terms of privacy, we need to talk about the logbook and the manifest. This might be the one thing that so, drives people away from it. Not so me, so but, yeah. you will have to have a logbook. Um, yep. Here is Curial and Relics book. It's not very thick, um, but you, you do have one, Foose. You have one. Yeah, you yeah, have yeah. Because, okay. because I'm because if I ship, let's say I have um, one of my guns. If I want to take and ship it, let, let's say Travis, you know, gets a CNR, and I have my Tokarev or the uh, Makarov, I want to send it to him. I I have to know what a CNR is. So, you know, it has a list, just lists and lists okay. and lists of guns. Well, I just think it's curious 
no pun intended. It's curious <laughs> that you're going to send a relic like a Makarov to, to Travis. Just saying. <laughs> if, if, if he comes to CNR, I will send him. Well, I mean, I, 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 I already told him I'm going to be sending him one. So there we go. And uh, that link that I put on the, the chat earlier, and I'll put this over on the gun channel side. Uh, this does teach you step by step what to do to fill out the paperwork and not screw it up. Mm -hmm. uh, again, thirty dollar yeah, thirty dollar application fee or thirty dollar fee for it. There you go, guys, so, on the gun channel. It, it's not like they're trying to fool somebody and, and no. get you to screw this up. They want no. you to have this, you know. Yeah, so, the idea is so you can collect antique firearms. You know, that's the whole idea behind it. Yeah. So this even comes down to it. Act, some of these actually have individual serial numbers. Oh. Like yeah. How often does that book come out? Is that a yearly publication? Uh, this, so was revised, year? this one was revised in December of twenty uh, of 2007. So this okay. one is, last revision was 11 years ago. So there's probably even more um, that's on the list now. Could, I, I don't know. I got this yeah. with mine, so this is the official. Okay, okay. Um, because I just got this couple couple of years. Uh, you could probably go online, and they probably have an updated mm -hmm. list on their website. Well, I mean, this would have been their updated list. What I'm saying is they might not print one every year that they add one or two things. So they might true. have an updated you know, listing on the website or something. Uh, question. Do they consider some of these repros as no. curios? No. It ha the manufacturer of the firearm, a.k.a. like on a bolt action, the receiver, um, has to be older. So if it's a new... If it's a repro, it is not a CNR. Yeah. Okay. I'm just curious. So, like, you get down to some Mosins. If you're, if you look underneath the tang and the Mosin date is older than uh, 98, I think it is, 1898, it's actually considered uh, not a not a firearm. I have two of those. I have two Mausers. One was made in 94. Four and the other one was made in 95, 1894, 1895. Those per the government are not firearms. I could send them straight through the mail to anyone. Yeah, that's why a lot of pawn shops that don't deal in firearms will still sell anything prior to 1898 because they're yep. not selling firearms. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. Now, like here. Can, your, can your family member inherit these guns? Yeah, what what's going to happen with the collection? I Well, no. Oh, hold on they, can, they can be sold or passed on anybody yeah. that does not even have a CNR Correct. license. Um, so, you just have to buy by the regular laws of ownership. You know. If you're so so th this is interesting. Here on page twenty five of this it says Narenko Chinese AK forty seven S five five six by forty five caliber serial number. It gives serial number. It's in the book. So someone had a rifle. They petitioned to the government to get their their rifle put on the cnr list mm. and they're and they looking gave it at, to them yeah i'm looking at three norinko chinese one is a um wow uh yeah so one is a ak-47s known as ak-47 ak-47s 84s-1 it's a 5.56 by 45 here's an ak-47s um all the way down to the serial numbers. Oh, wow. So it could in each individual firearms. Um, here's a North Korean type, a 1964 pistol caliber, uh, 762 millimeter Tokarev. You know, it's yeah. Now, um, the it, one it, thing they said about that was having that you have to have your logbook available at any uh -huh. time. Should the BA, should mm -hmm. the ATF stop by your home? Yes. You know, you have to make sure that you have to be willing to at least hand off that. Do you have to show them the weapons if they want to see them? They, no, it has to be like CNR, it's your logbook for yourself. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know the rule on that. I don't think you have to have the weapons. But like for me, I have to have firearms that aren't checked out. Yeah. Um, Because I am, an, I have my own one. So, you know, I've, I've done one transfer now. So let's say I, I got the gun in. I have seven days to put it into, into the logbook and seven day and a couple days to check it out. But if 
if I have it in the logbook, it better be here. If not, I'm in trouble. Yeah. So. Yeah, so there's going to be some responsibility in what you purchase. But again, you're buying it because a lot of times you're going to be you're going to be curious about a, a certain kind of firearm. Maybe you're a collector or you like the lineage of a certain line, and that's what you want to buy. It just makes it more convenient for you. And again, we're not trying to shun out the dealer or shun out the person losing mm -hmm. on a transfer fee. It's just these older guns, there might be something you want. Yeah. I mean, really, you'd make your money back on the fee after the first first rifle is purchased. Probably two, first yeah. gun is purchased, you know, depending on what your what your transfer fees cost. So that's something to consider doing. And there's going to, again, every year there's going to be more and more firearms that will be added to the list, and you could petition to get something added if they haven't published the newest version of it, right? Well, or you, you, if you want yours to be on there, you can say, hey, here's when it was made and all that stuff, and they could actually take and add it like those couple examples it's just those that one example with that serial number. If it if it's the same gun but different serial number, it's not CNR. It's whatever's in this book. Okay. The Star BMs, do the older models qualify yet, or they've not been around that long? Those were a nineteen seventies production, is that right? <clears throat> and again, guys, when you're looking at these guns, it'll say, Oh, it says this model's not CNR eligible. It was manufactured between seventy two and ninety two. So it'll get there eventually. So, again, guys, uh, if you look these I up, a lot of these listings, they'll tell you if it's CNR eligible or not. I'm not seeing any star in here. So, I, yeah, I was they're, Smith. They're not, Smith. They're not. Radon, yeah. The Radon P64s are in there. Uh, the CZ50, CZ50 is eligible. Well, let's go to CZs. Yeah. Oh, I'm looking on Classic Farms right now. They tell you. There's a bunch of CZs yeah. out there. Yeah. I wish they would have more of a like an easier to recognize symbol on the listings. You know, yeah, CZ82. Is CNR eligible? Nine by eighteen. Uh, you're gonna pay a little bit more for those than something else, but um, CZ twenty seven. That'd be kind of cool one to have, though. I'm not gonna lie. Oh yeah. CZ thirty eight yeah. fifty fifty two. Yeah, CZ fifty two is what you're going up in price. Those mm -hmm. are also on there. And I'm gonna hurt Foose's feelings right here, but I'm not a big <laughs> CZ fan. But I'd like to. Well, that's fun. I wouldn't. I wouldn't mind having a nine by eighteen. That'd be kind of cool. CZ fifty two is awesome. <laughs> I had one. I had uh, one back in my, college. My yeah. They're awesome. Yep. Um. So Czechoslovakian. Uh, VZ82 slash CZ82, all calibers, all serial numbers. CZ Which I do, I, I do have one of those. So if you go out to range day, I, I could bring it. If we do a range oh, day. Oh, see, see now, now you're just you know putting that low hanging <laughs> fruit in front of me. Well, I mean, I, I, I also have a CZ. And my height has got to be pretty low hanging fruit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's true. Um, oh man. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, I, I I I could have my CZ twenty seven. I could have um, my fifty as well. So yeah, so the idea is, if you don't mind the fact that you can keep there. a logbook and you could be subject to some sort but, of stack up. So you know, so the yeah. logbooks are not supplied by the government, but they're like yeah. twenty bucks on Amazon. So yeah, you can buy them. Yeah. I mean, it, it can even be digital on your computer, but if you do that, you are opening the government to be able to search your entire computer. So I think it's interesting a, that you're required to have it, but yet they won't supply it. That's interesting. Yes. <laughs> you think they will? Because they, they have a list of suggested uh, models yes, to buy. They do suggest mm -hmm. who you can go to and who to get it from, but you're right. You're right. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, again, but, but, if you but, like that but, convenience of, of but, being but able all, to... Yeah. But all of your 40s, 473s, your multiple handgun purchases, all that stuff is given to you. So. Now, do you have to follow the same rules as an FFL as far as waiting a year to sell it after you've bought it? I don't know. Uh, like, no, I mean, it's not. I don't have to, you don't have to wait a year. If, if I buy it, you're just, you're not doing it to make a business out of it. I mean, the, right. the intention is you're going to hold on oh, to it. You're about CNR, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I, like an I'm FFL, sure. if they, if they buy a gun for their own personal collection and they want to resell it later because they don't like it and don't want it, they need to, whatever reason they have to sit on their own personal purchase for a year before they can sell it because they're an FFL and it might be looked at some sort of backdoor sale. So I so, didn't know if the CNR apply, the same thing applied. I, I, I would like, I, I did not know about that on the, uh, on the O one. I did not, I have not heard of that. I have not researched into that. Um, 
but yeah. All so, right. So that kind of covers the idea behind. So Tony, are you still interested? <laughs> uh, yeah. It's kind of cool, isn't it? Again, 30 bucks, three years. Yeah. I mean, you so, know, so, yeah. So, so here's one. Yugoslavian uh, manufactured M59 and M59 slash 66, 762 by 39 caliber, all semi-automatic versions having a fixed magazine manufactured from 1947 to 1992. So this, even though it's made in 1992, huh. could still be a CNR. That's hey. that's interesting. <laughs> I'm looking at them on Gunbroker right now, and there's there's you can buy crates of them. You can buy crates of ten. M fifty nines. M fifty nine. Yeah, CNR, CNR eligible. How much are they? Uh, starting bid. You're not going to be happy about it, but four seventy five. But again, this is Gunbroker. You look around more, you will find better deals. I just kind of use this as just kind of the, the test to see what's out for the crate. No, not for the crate. No, for a single oh. a crate. If you want to get a crate, it's you're going to get 10, 10, sequ 10 sequential guns unissued in Cosmoline with the logbooks for $10,000. <laughs> but unissued. Well, no, the sequential order is more than... Serial number of production, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But unissued, that means they're going to be, once you get the... I mean, they're, yeah, they're slathered in Cosmoline. Yeah. But again, but just mean, finding crates yeah. anymore is about impossible, you mm -hmm. know? And it's for a collector, the sequential is more valuable than the guns, having them in the sequential order. Yeah. And again, the SKSs are definitely starting to skyrocket in price, too. I mean, it's just it's more you're going to buy because you don't have one or you're going to buy because you want it for, you know, for, for a collector perspective. But again, oh, those are on CNR. So oh, there oh, you go. oh, M59. Yeah, that's a I, I forgot that was a SKS variant. Yeah, yeah. But again, with SKS is running four fifty to five hundred dollars. Again, the fact it's on the CNR mm -hmm. makes it convenient, makes it easy for you to get. There's quite a few unissued ones over here on Gunbroker right now. Yeah. Uh, so here's a Ruger Mark One U.S. stamp medallion pistol serial numbers seventy six thousand to seventy nine thousand are in here. So yeah, yeah they're they're readily available on here too, and they do tell you if it's CNR. So I'm just getting, I'm just doing yeah. some searches on Gunbroker. Mark Hughes yeah. ain't CNR eligible yet, are they? No, no, just the Mark ones. Some of, some of the Mark ones. Yeah, they do put the uh, what's what's the serial number on that one? That you what, what's what you say now? It's it's what? Uh, seventy six thousand to seventy nine thousand. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, these are a little um, bit, newer. but again, if you hunt around a little bit, find what you want. Yeah. Yeah. Um. This is fun. We're like window shopping. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, I mean, the thing is, like, this is the first time I've seen what's actually out there, what's actually on the market. Yeah. I'll go back. Yeah, I mean, to, th th this is the first time I've, I opened up this book. There we go. So, all right. So, give me another one. We'll just look up a couple more, and then we'll go ahead and call it. Um, it's good. See what's out there. Let's see. Um. <laughs> Again, your Mosins are obviously going to fall into that category. You have to worry about that. Yeah, my Mark is only 33,000. Uh, it would have been the production year, though, Tony, if it wasn't at least 50 years old. Then yeah, it, mine's got a lot of letters in front of it. Yeah. So what? what is it? It's a He's Mark talking about Mark II. Oh. Um, I don't know. No, it doesn't. Matter. It's got high standards. I'm trying to find something that is not so obscure. Be, you're not going to find yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. But again, you can just do a standalone curio and relic search over there on Gunbroker, and it'll pop up. Yeah. There. And you can see what's for sale. Like I said, there's three thousand something firearms for sale. So there you go. Really, what this comes down to is not paying a transfer fee. That's about it. Yeah. <clears throat> Well, having yeah. it delivered to your door if you don't have a gun store your nearby. damn house, yeah. So yeah. you don't have to go to the gun shop and get it. Like you driving 10 minutes down the road to the gun shop is really hard to do. Uh, no, but it's costly. You know, I've got I've got the pawn shop here, but if I want something CNR and I can't get an antique, i got to do an 80-mile round trip to Cabela's. Not that it's a big deal, but that'd be my closest one. So. And let's, yeah. let's be honest here. How often do we go to the gun shop and just get what we went there for? <laughs> yeah. Every time? We're not talking about going for just joy, okay? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. 
But no, that's Foos, that's interesting you got that. I'm glad you joined in with us on yeah. that today because I was I was interested in how that how that works out exactly. Yeah. How about this? All shotguns properly marked and identified as manufactured for any military organization prior to nineteen forty six and in the original military configuration only. We're talking like trench guns here? Yeah. <laughs> Nice, nice. Um, all original military bolt action and semi-automatic rifles manufactured between 1899 and 1946. Were there any semi-autos? Just, just that... one. <laughs> it's like okay. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, well, yeah, yeah your grands so. and stuff. Your, yeah. you know, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um. BMG. Yeah. So. What? BMG. BMG, BMG, BMG. I don't. I'm not familiar with that one. Me the yeah. not... Browning machine gun. You mean? Oh yeah, but that's also NFA. I mean, there's a ton. There's a page in or how many Colts? So oh, God, the Colts are just yeah everywhere. So man. Colts starts on page lower half of right here next to my thumb, page eighteen. And it stops about the same spot on page 22. So there's a ton of Colts. There's a lot of high standards. You know, German models. G German military rifles, Kyle, 22 single shot repeaters, all manufacturers in the original military configur configuration marked uh, Calabrino whatever whatever manufactured pr pr uh, prior to 1946 so seems to be an oxymoron there single shot repeater and single shot and repeaters oh, oh okay i didn't hear the end i didn't say it i'm sorry cool cool um model 1916 great and waffer original spigot type mortars the CNR. So you get a German mortar. <laughs> there you go. So so Calaveras <laughs> is asking if this is story time. No, Calaveras, we're just talking about all the fun and unique things that, that are suddenly opened up to you once you get the CNR license or are easier to acquire. Yeah, I mean, it, all this stuff is you could acquire. It's just yeah. go, you know, finding it just like normal and getting it shipped to your house instead of getting it uh, Through the sent to your FFL. Yeah. yeah. Cool, cool. All right, man, I don't want to cut you off, but I think I'm going to go ahead and call it. Uh, covered what we needed to today, got through all the good topics. So uh, before we go ahead and go, we did have a few people that were with us that have left. So Ala Hatfield and AWAG, I want to thank you guys for joining in. Sandhill Shooter, thanks for being with us today. And uh, on the panel, we'll let you guys go ahead and say a few final words here before we move on. So uh, David, we'll go ahead and move on with you. David, are you going to get your uh, CNR license now? Maybe that'll be a little more Maryland friendly. Uh, I mean, I'll look into it, but probably not. <laughs> you know, yeah. Maryland will figure out a way to screw it up somehow, I'm sure. All right, man. Any final plugs for the channel before you go? Uh, yeah, if you guys want to check out my stuff, that's cool. Uh, it's just my name, David Bowling. Just look for the Ruger logo. Uh, more importantly, check out GunStreamer. Check out GunTube. Check out Gun Channels. You know, I get it. I'm not talking, you know, get off YouTube. But YouTube became the biggest because people use it. So if people use GunStreamer, GunTube, and Gun Channels, they'll get bigger. Very good. Right on, man. Okay, uh, Foose, any parting words, man? Um, I did create uh, Sports Shooters Ammunition on Gun Channels. It's just SSA. Okay. Um, and I'll show you the logo. Plug a link on the on the uh, inside chat here. I'll go yeah. ahead and move it on over to everybody on the, the YouTube and the Gun Channel yeah. side. So if you look on this, on uh, there you go. Yep, right here. This is my logo. Um, gun channels. SS. If you type in SSA, you will find it. Um, because that is what the what it's under. Okay. So right here, SSA. You can find mm -hmm. it. Send me a message on that uh, if if you're interested. So yeah. All right, man. Cool, cool. So keep us updated on that, and I'll be placing an order with you here pretty soon. So I'm looking forward to trying it out, man. I'm excited. It's going to be good, good. stuff. Good. Like, yeah. 
All right, ghost. The ghost. I, 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 oh, I, 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 do, I do have a one request, like yeah. you and I already talked about unboxing, like breaking the seal and unboxing um, on live on air sometime. I, I, I'd like to be in that chat. Um, yeah. And just because I want to put some stickers and stuff in there for you. Cool, cool. No, I'll make sure I don't. We'll just we'll go live and I'll make sure that you're around and we'll just go ahead and do it at that point. And check it out and kind of take. I can ask you some questions if I'm kind of curious about it and yeah. when it comes out of the box and stuff. And then we'll go live and do a little caliber corner. Range. Yeah, there you go. It, it could be, yeah. Ammo unboxing. There you go. Um, so all, all my ammo. Uh, I, I recently got a roll sizer in there. The ammo you have uh, isn't roll sized. I don't. I don't have any ammo that is roll sized, but um, from now on, all ammo will be roll sized. That means any bulges or anything like that will be taken out of it. Um, but every am every round of ammo that does go out does get chamber checked. Um, cool. So I'm not going to have any, any issues there. But yeah, so that that roll sizing is was a piece of equipment that will help will help the machine run smoother. Cool. So. That's right, man. Let's help and get that uh, launched off the ground and get that up and running. Yep. All right. Okay. Uh, Ghost, any parting words, dude? <clears throat> hey, Ghost, are you still with us, buddy? He was there a second ago. Do you leave the leave the chat? Nope. No, maybe if I get off mute, it'd be go. different. <laughs> You know, I, I eat crayons yeah. for breakfast, so you have to excuse oh. me sometimes. We all do. We all do. Lunch and dinner. Oh, God. <laughs> all right, man. Uh, any parting words before we go, Ghost? Anything you want to say about the no, channel man, or I, anything upcoming? Yeah. After shows when I can get on, man. Appreciate you very much. Happy. Cool. Hey, you have a happy New Year's too, man. Cool, cool. Early happy New Year's, yeah. All right. Okay, so Ghost, you're cutting out a little bit. We'll go ahead and move over to, uh, to Gizzard Gary. Uh, guess Gary, what's up, man? How you doing? Yeah, I'm doing all right. <clears throat> all right. Thanks for having me. I'm just sorry I got here so late, oh, but all good. something about <clears throat> sleeping past the alarm or something like that. <laughs> Dude, it I, happens. It happens. <clears throat> I don't understand that. Had it set for 7.55 and woke up at 9.45. Didn't oh, quite Oh, my work. God. You must be running that East Coast time zone or something. I don't even know. That's, that's too, no, beyond that, beyond that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, anyway, thanks yeah. for having me. At least I got to sit in for the last half hour. Great discussion. Cool. Uh, I'd like to reiterate, re, ugh, that's reiterate. A tough word. reiterate <laughs> what everybody else said. Check out anything that begins with gun, gun streamer, gun tube, gun channels, gun websites, all that good stuff. Cool. Uh, great places to be. Also, like, share, and subscribe to Travis P11, one of the best gun channels on the interwebs. Oh, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. You never know what you're going to see. One day it's hot cocoa. The next day it's machine guns. I don't know. I love I it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hot air right. cookers. Yeah. Hot air. No, that's on my B channel. I'm not going to put kitchen appliances on my primary channel. I try to keep it gun, tactical, caffeine related products only on the on the primary channel, if possible. So that works. Air fryers. You never know. So, yeah. Yep. yep. Ah, good deal. Good deal. All right, man. So thanks for being with us. I do appreciate you being here. You bet. Cool. All right, squib load, squibby. Thanks for hanging out, man. I appreciate it very much and all your insight into the iron sights and all that fun stuff. Yeah, you know, I got my cranky old man attitude with me and my uh, old set in my ways kind of hey. montage that I always do. But I mean, at the end of the day, we're all uh, two A guys and we all bring something, something in, you know, experience or opinion mm. or or just uh knowledge and i i enjoy hanging out with you guys on uh on all the tubes uh and uh talking and just learning and looking at things from a different point of view sometimes and it's it's all good it's all good and uh if dusty's out there listening yeah i'm running late anybody who knows me knows i i pretty much run late to everything so I, i'll be there to, to kill bambi but uh I'll be a little late. All right. Hello, squib. Happy hunting, Squib. Happy hunting. And uh, just, just Thank you. good luck with the shots this time. I hope it doesn't require a case of ammo, you know. <laughs> I did go I did go back and do a round count, and I actually put two less rounds down range oh. in my mag dump than I thought, but there that still go. doesn't excuse it. Sure, sure, sure. I got you, man. Awesome. 
All right, man. Well, thanks for being with us. Okay, Tony. Tony, any parting words, man? Anything you want to say before we call it? Uh, I don't know what I was thinking when you was asking about what I plan to get this year, but I am planning to get the stock conversion for this 1860 and the Cattleman's Carbine here pretty shortly. Hey, look forward to seeing it, man. I found a direct fit stock conversion for this thing, and I've always wanted the other one, so this year I'm going to get both of them. There you go, man. Reward yourself, dude. Heck yeah. All right. I fully intend to. All right. And thanks Wait. for letting me be here, and good day, everybody. Happy New Year, all that happy horse crap. <laughs> happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Let's get it all out right now. Just be done with it. Just be done with it. All right. So Tony's been with us again since the since episode one. So Tony, it's awesome having you with us, and I do appreciate you being here. And uh, anyway, you have yourself a good week, sir. And hopefully we'll see you. Uh, well, like I said, next Saturday could be interesting. I, I don't know. I, I may be on the road heading back. There may or may not be an episode. I'll try to give you guys an update. I'll post a message somewhere, make a quick video just to give you guys a heads up whether or not there's going to be an episode. Uh, Sandhills and I will try to do something maybe Saturday morning, do something before I come home. Um, I'll be on a hunting trip next week, so we'll see. Uh, we'll see how things go down. So you need anyway. to get yourself a fill-in host, Tony. You could take over if you want to. You're always awake at this time. I can call you, make sure you're awake, and say, "Go ahead, buddy." Hey, anybody uh, no, can have the time I'm, slot if they want it. It's all good. I can. I can. I can. I'll, I'll pass it off to someone to run it. Hmm? I'm not reliable enough, man. Ah, uh, okay, okay. All right, all right. So anyway, guys, that's it. Thanks for joining us for Caliber Corner episode number seventy-four. Let's just see who was with us over on the uh, gun channel side. I know we had paper plane crash over there and Patrick was over there. Uh, David was also over there. Dead horse joined in for a while there, man. Dead horse. It's always good to have you join in with us, buddy, uh, to join us over there on the, on the gun channel side. Dead horse. We need to get you on here sometime. You always seem to be awake. I think we definitely need to get you to join in and uh, hang out for a while. Anybody's welcome to join us. If they ever want to just uh, send me an email at the caliber corner um, at gmail.com and we'll definitely get a hold of you. Sandhill Shooter says, get off my lawn. Man, I'll try not to get on your lawn, dude. There's too much snow on my lawn anyway. Calaveras34 Special joining us. Gizzard Gary, Black Cat Outdoors, Ozzy Orsborn, David Bowling, SS Pawn with us. SS Pawn, happy new year. Happy new year to you too, sir. Uh, Tim Foley with us, and Frank Hellman was out there. Michael Willis, Vandalistic of Vlogs joining us from Land Down Under. Uh, Justin Haycook was with us. Southpaw RX. Yeah, Southpaw, I need to mention that real quick before I go. There's a little drawing coming up on the channel, too. Uh, Stealth Hunter 1000 was with us. Midnight Range TM is with us, too. Uh, again, Scott P79 was out there. Blue Steel 44 in the house. Freedom for All is joining in with us. Kendrick 98. I'm sure I'm going to miss a few of you guys. Clint was out there, too. Clint, good having you join us today. Um, otherwise, I think that's about it. If I miss anybody, I do apologize. Uh, real quick, I will do a 13,000 subscriber giveaway. Um, this time around, it's going to happen either on uh, GunTube.org or over on GunStreamer. It'll be one of those things where I will have a video posted on YouTube directing you over to those channels, and all you got to do is just leave a comment on the video. Obviously, I'd like to see you guys subscribe to me on one of those two platforms, but uh, we'll do the drawing live either on GunTube or over on GunStreamer. I'll post the video and the drawing over there. So we'll make it work. So 13,000 subscriber. Southpaw RX donated a little something for the drawing, and I'll mention it here in the, uh, the the announcement video for the drawing when it happens. Hopefully be at 13,000 subscribers in about two weeks or three weeks. And we'll do the drawing at that time, maybe the first drawing of 2019 for the channel. And we got a little something lined up that Southpaw RX has donated to the channel. So the channel's growing. It's always good to see that uh, people joining in and new people getting into the gun community. Otherwise, guys, I think that's it. So this has been Caliber Corner episode number 74. Hopefully have 75 next week. Maybe do a little live broadcast from out in the field out on the prairies. Otherwise, guys, that's it. I want you to have fun. I want you to be safe. And as always, guys, uh, we will talk to you soon. Shall not give Felicia an infringement bird. Bye, Alicia. Shall not, shall not infringe on my Felicia bird. Is that what we just said? Is that <laughs> <laughs> something close, close oh, enough. my God. I can't even keep up with you guys. All right. Adios.